UCLA will receive. They'll be going left to right. Richard Brio, J Dub. Rick Neuheisel talked about it. He had an excellent camp. In fact, he was prepared to start that K-State game, but then Kevin Prince got the call. He's ready to go. It's just going to see if he has any trepidation making the plays. And we had an opportunity to talk to Brio before the game. We went on the field, you and I, and I gave him thumbs up, and he said I was just waiting for the opportunity. The advice that I gave this young man is that you were a star in high school. It's time for you to be a star in college. It's his opportunity. Now, Nico Grasso, great kicker for Washington State. The Cougs will be uh, kicking off the uh, 6'1 senior. And uh, for UCLA, Smith and Coleman will be back to receive. Smith is actually third in the Pac-10 in kick returns this year with a long of 45 and an average of 25 and a half. Get ready for Bruin football here on a, kind of a crazy weather day in Southern California. So relax with us. The Bruins have been on a roll the last couple of weeks. Let's see if they can keep it going this week as the favorite. This one's going to tumble into the end zone and Smith wisely will uh, down it there. And the Bruins will have it at the 20 yard line. The two and two. UCLA Bruins. And once again, here is Richard Brio from Los Osos High School, 6'2", 222, and a sophomore, has seen action this year. He came in relief during the Stanford game. He's had an opportunity to play a little bit, but let's go back to his fall camp. Going to this camp scrimmage, he was able to, to throw the ball around the field, and hopefully today he'll be able to do the same thing. This defense has had issues for the Cougars, and they're documented. The Bruins will throw. Brijo, near side, caught. Morel Presley, they'll line him up all over the place. But there is a flag on the field, so we'll uh, check the flag. Bruins were penalized eight times last week. We'll see who this Dead is. Dead ball, on. personal foul. Defense number 25, 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's not what Washington State needs. They need to play a perfect game. They missed 32 tackles. Yeah, 32 tackles against USC last week in the 50-16 drubbing up at Martin Stadium. So after only 27 yards of passing last week, J-Dub, Bruins come out throwing. And I think what Chow has said in our interview is that he's going to do what Washington State gives him. Quickly, Brijo fires, caught again. This time it's Rosario, the leading receiver for UCLA. Very close to a first down. That's his 13th catch of the year. Hoffman, Ellis, and Simmons make the stop for Washington State. Here are your lineups for UCLA. Ryan Taylor is the Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Week. How about that? First lineman since 2003 in the Pac-10 to win that honor. Got to get Rosario, Embry involved, and Jonathan Franklin had 118 yards and a touchdown last week. First down as they move the chains for the Blue and Bird. Three plays, three passes, three completions, three different. Well, no, that was Rosario again to the near side. His second catch. And UCLA simply is just doing uh, and orchestrating the offense. What Washington State is giving them is what they're moving up to. A little deeper this year on the front line for Washington State. Their linebackers, Hoffman Ellis is one of their top linemen, and Sam Backer, really fast. And uh, the DBs have been getting torched. All we have to do is tell you the numbers for UCLA. This time, it'll be a run. Anthony Barr's got the call, and he's inside the 35-yard line, down to about the 33 for UCLA. So the 6-5 freshman gets the call for the Bruins. And you have to like how Norm Chow is actually missing it up. Um, Rosario is still limping off, um, but you have an opportunity here to orchestrate an offense that works to Brijo, and this is exactly how he has done it in practice, and they're not changing anything. Jonathan Franklin behind Brijo. As you mentioned uh, earlier, J-Dub, Jonathan Franklin is tailored in his running style for this pistol offense. He's going to get it right up the gut. Battles to about the 29-yard line, so it'll be very close to a first down. Alex Hoffman Ellis again on the stop for Washington State. And UCLA has to come out and be balanced today. They have to be able to run the ball, but also be able to pass the ball down the field. No huddle, third down, so quickly, quick snap, Franklin. He's very close. I think forward progress is going to get him past the 29-yard line, but a good play by Brandon Rankin on the 
uh, defensive line, the JC All-America, very athletic at 275 to come in and make that stop and maybe force a fourth down. Very close. There you see a, tri a trio of Cougars. Should be just by uh, eyeballing it from up here enough for a first down. And, and the Cougars have had a hard time. They went live in practice four days straight to make sure that they can get used to tackling the football because they've had a hard time tackling all week long. Just check out the numbers again for the Cougars. Last in points allowed at 43, giving up nearly 500 yards a game. Last in pass defense at 286 per. Ninth out of 10 in run defense at 209. They did create three turnovers, picked Matt Barkley twice last week, uh, but still were unable to get the Trojans to punt the football. As he never had to punt it last week. Brehel looking over the middle, misses. His open receiver down at about the 17-yard line. The target was Randall Carroll. It'll be second down at the 29. And Brio has to be able to hit a simple slant. This is the things that they, and it's about timing, and it's about getting rid of that game time jitter. This is the first drive, and I, drive, and I think he's done a wonderful job orchestrating and executing. When I say execute, meaning running the offense, the chow, and the plays that he wants to run. Rosario getting treatment on the bench, and we'll keep you posted on that. Franklin is the running back. He will get it up the middle. Again, minimal yardage. And it'll be a third down for UCLA. And this year on third down, they are 30%. Opponents are converting 32, rather 42% of the time against Washington State on third down. So third down from the 26-yard line. There's Nelson Rosario getting the treatment. And this third down is where the UCLA Bruins have to improve. Six of, I think, 27 have been successful, but they have to be able to convert third down. Brijo on third down. Got a man caught. First down and more down to the 13-yard line. Taylor Embry moved the chains for the blue and gold. They're in the red zone here on drive number one of the football game. Brijo simply, and the offensive line is doing a wonderful job building a pocket and giving Brijo a chance, and Embry runs a stop and catches the ball first down. So far, J-Dub, Brijo and Norm Chow calling the play, spreading it around here on this initial drive. Franklin is back in. Coleman was in on the last play. Brijo, once again, all quick hitting stuff. And that's Randall Carroll. He's knocked out of bounds inside the five-yard line. The track phenom, Randall Carroll. Ran the fastest 100 in California in 17 years as a senior in high school. He's a burner, but that time he caught the short one inside the five for UCLA. And Randall Carroll has been working very hard on his hands. Every day he stays after and catching extra balls, so when he gets an opportunity, everybody knows he's fast, but he's trying to show people he has hands. Efficient drive for the Bruins. Up the middle, touchdown UCLA. Jonathan Franklin, that was easy. What UCLA has offered to Washington State is the simple run. Being able to run the football, they were able to do it in Texas, they were able to do it against Houston, and now today they're continuing to run the football, and you got to give a lot of credit to that offensive line. The filthy five up front for UCLA. And, and Rick Lou has to say thank you and apologize to their parents. Kai Forbath adds the extra point. Franklin, the score, 7-0 Bruins. Bruins back at the Rose Bowl. Good news, bad news. It's 7-0. That's the good news. Bad news, James Washington. Nelson Rosario carted off the field. And I think what happened, you had um, Barr coming around on a run play and actually just got caught up. And it's bad when receivers are blocking. And it's more of a leg whip, and you just hope that the young man is okay because he's worked very hard to be out here on the playing field. Richard Brijo, 5 of 6 for 40 yards, most efficient on that drive. Winston and Barton are back to receive the kick. And at the three-yard line, it's Isaiah Barton, fifth 
in Pac-10 kickoff returns. Flag gets thrown into the pile at about the 25-yard line. So we will check that before Washington State and their quarterback, Jeff Toole, take the field. Dozen plays for the Bruins to get on the board 7-0. We're four minutes in. A relatively lengthy discussion. Prior to the return, an illegal wedge was formed half the distance to the goal, first down. Two big penalties for Paul Wolf's team. And the rule has changed in college where you can't allow three guys to form a wedge you know, and just kind of mull over guys. So when you see on a kickoff, when three guys form a wedge, it, it'll be an automatic penalty. Last time Paul Wolf was in this stadium, he was playing in a game where Washington State upset number one UCLA in the 80s. So great memories for him. Jeff Tool, the starting quarterback, isn't there yet, but he's growing, he's learning, and they really love potential that Jeff Tool has. Already put up better numbers than he did last year when he had his red shirt pulled at the Coliseum against USC. James Montgomery, great story, battling back from a leg injury that nearly cost him his career. And uh, he is back the 5'10 senior. Let's take a look at the lineups for Washington State up front. Last week, maybe their best effort despite that score. They protected pretty well. Yes, he did have three sacks, however. Montgomery's are running back, but it's the wide receivers that are really the story here, especially Karstetter, the big target, and Marquise Wilson, who will see the freshman. Throw to the far side, caught, out of bounds, first down at the 24-yard line. That's Jared Karstetter, who caught a touchdown pass on a trick play during their initial drive last week. And you will see that Washington State will try to test Aaron Hester. Here's your UCLA defense. There's a change up front, and we'll get to it. These linebackers are so good. Uh, Laramore, Westgate, and Ayers. Uh, Tony Dye has been a man, uh, an absolute workhorse, uh, overshadowing at times Raheem Moore. This one's knocked down at the line of scrimmage for the Bruins, and it will set up a second down. And, get, and getting back to my point about the matchup, I think what you were going to see is Darren Hester will have to be able to make the play. This is a great opportunity where you're starting to get pressure on the quarterback, and who else but, but Ayers basically making another play. He's just phenomenal on the football field. That's good pressure by David Carter, too. Tool will run it out to about the 30-yard line. He'll be about four yards short of the first down where Patrick Larimore made the play. Laramore forced a couple of fumbles. Uh, two weeks ago, he was the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Week. And just last week, Sean Westgate got that on. And I have to say, the biggest surprise on this UCLA Bruins defense has to be the, the other linebackers besides Akeem Ayers. You know, Laramore and Westgate has done a wonderful job. Yeah, as poor as they were playing the first couple of weeks, they're playing that much better. Things are just slowing down for them now. Tool. Pretty good time in the pocket. Now it breaks down, and he is pushed back at the 31-yard line. Going to be well short. Cassius Marsh led a trio of Bruins on the stop. It'll be fourth down and a punting situation for the Cougars. What has changed before, from the first two weeks compared to the second two weeks is how they're like bumblebees, and they're all attacking the football on defense. And there, it's not one guy that's making a tackle. It's a team that's making the tackle. What are they preaching, James? Hey, fly, fly, to, the fly to the football. Fly to the football. That's exactly what Coach Buller tells them. Moving around Reed Forrest and then kind of pooches it down the field on a line drive. And this is going to be extremely effective. It is touched. Should be down around the 10-yard uh, line. I'm going to kick it at around the 11-yard line. We'll see where they eventually mark it. Right now, though, a 56-yard effort by Reed Forrest, the senior, one of the great hunters in the country. We'll see you in a minute. Well, it was a great moment last week when uh, Kevin Prince jumped off the training table, went in and threw a touchdown pass for UCLA. No structural damage to that right knee, James, but shutting him down for this week, probably a good idea. Well, I talked to 
um, Kevin Prince during practice, a little swelling. So he has to be able to, to rest that knee, make sure that it's healthy, and get ready for this nice road stre stretch against Cal and Oregon. They got a bye coming up after the Cal game. So, I mean, he's still the quarterback for this UCLA Bruins team. He's still the leader, and he has worked hard to be the leader of this team. And it's good to have Brio getting some reps because he deserves to play also. You know, it's interesting. You look at those numbers, 285 for the year. Last year alone against Washington State, Kevin Prince threw for 314 yards in the big UCLA win up at Washington State. Up the middle to the... 19-yard line on second down. It'll set up a third down and about five for UCLA. DeMonte Horton made the stop. All right, James, take us back to last week, and this is where he got hurt. And, you know, when you run the pistol, um, most of the time the ball is in your hands, and your quarterback is going to be exposed to big hits. Uh, and last week, he comes out, he's scrambling around, hits the sideline, and that's just part of football. But you got to have guys that can come off the bench and make some plays, and hopefully Richard Brijo can get that job done. Bruins hit a couple of third downs on their first drive. Brijo, near side, not going to get there. That's good coverage as the Bruins were looking for Randall Carroll. Nolan Washington, boy, what a disappointment he has been. He knows it. The coaches know it. He's a freshman, yeah, and as they say, he's in a man's league now. They expect him to step up. That was pretty good coverage right there. That was nice coverage by Washington there. And expectation is, is high. I mean, you know, a lot of guys see you play in high school and they think you're supposed to come to college and play at that same level, but it is a learning curve no matter what team you play for. Jeff Rock will uh, kick it. 18 punts this year, an average of over 45 and a half. And Nolan Washington, who just made that great coverage play, boy, fair catch, although he had about 10 yards between himself and the nearest pursuing Bruin. But he'll take it at around the 30-yard line after the 48-yard punts. It's been tough times uh, for that cat over the last couple of years. Washington State, they've lost 18 of their last 19 Pac-10 games. They were 0-9 in the conference last year. Lost their opener last week to USC. James Montgomery is the back. Montgomery across the 35 on first down. And for UCLA, Westgate was there, so was Akeem Ayers to wrap him up. I mentioned great story. Montgomery took a helmet to the calf, had to have immediate uh, surgery the next day. Uh, and he's about 90% back. It's been a long road back for him, though. He just hasn't played a lot of football. He transferred over from Cal, he's had to sit out a year, James, so uh, he's been a bit rusty. On second down, throwing down the field, incomplete. Intended for Karstetter. And Karstetter has, has four touchdowns for them. He is their go-to guy. I mean, he is a big receiver. He's able to make the plays. And I think today you're going to see that matchup with Aaron Hester and Karstetter. No huddle offense, Washington State. They ran it exclusively last week against USC. Montgomery is behind. To, in fact, they ran a bit of a pistol offense at times also with a running back right behind Jeff Tool. Tool steps up in the pocket, guns it over the middle, caught at the 41-yard line. So on the third down play, they're probably about a yard short, and Karstetter again, the big target, makes the play. It'll be about a yard short of a first down. And see the difference in a team that has confidence. I mean, it, it's some things where you're trying to make some things happen. You know, Washington State comes out and punts the ball. But I think personally, at some point in time, you got to believe that you can move the ball at least one yard to keep and build some confidence in this young, young Cougar team. Reed Forrest, who punts a lot. <laughs> He has uh, 26 punts, most in the Pac-10 coming in. He's already punted a couple of times. This afternoon, Taylor Embry lets that one go into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. Again, a 59-yard punt. All right, injury update. Rebecca, what you got for us? Well, guys, quick update on Rosario Nelson. The trainers took a look at his left ankle and decided he did need to be taken back for some x-rays. I will keep you posted. But... The spirits are high down here. Before Rosario left the field, he sought out Brijo, gave him a high five, and said, nice job on that touchdown. These guys are definitely earning the right to have fun. Yeah, Rebecca, it's been great camaraderie between these two teams. They were just trying to salvage the season, or rather between this uh, UCLA team and between teammates. 
Uh, they were just trying to salvage the season after going 0-2 and, and getting embarrassed against Stanford. Right? And uh, Rick Neuheisel said, yeah, we were that bad, but Stanford might be that good. Here's a, a lofted ball left sideline intended for Embry. Going to be a little bit too far, and it's going to be second down after the incompletion. And the secondary by Washington State is doing a, a great job getting in the face of these UCLA Bruin receivers. And, and they, I think Washington State does a better job when they're in press coverage and they're allow, allowed to be athletes. Where they seem to have problems is when they're in the zone coverage. It leaves too much space and too much open space for the quarterback to see their receiver. Rio, five for eight, as he rolls and throws, and it's dropped. Good hit, too. Ricky Marvre was the intended receiver, but uh, timing it very well, the defender. And that's a Tyree Toomer, who's wearing number 15 in honor of his best friend, roommate, Leandre Daniels, who broke his neck. He's uh, going to be okay, going to be able to go on and live a great life, but his football career is over, so he changed his number from 33 to 15 in honor of his friend. That was well-timed. So third down and 10. In motion is Presley. Franklin is behind the quarterback. Riho. First down yarded, yeah, falling down and getting that first down is Ricky Marbury, and then a late flag comes in. So a good throw, well-timed by Brijo. And this could be going against the Bruins. As Ricky got up, might have spiked the ball. That's what Rick's saying, what are you doing? Come on, you know better than that. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 10 offense, 15 yard penalty, first down. Yeah, silly, inexcusable. But it's after the catch, so it's going to be a first down, but they'll take it back 15 yards. Ricky Marbury does a wonderful job getting the first down, but something simple. He is an energetic player. A kid from Centennial Corona has a lot of energy, and I don't want to take that away from him because he works harder than anybody. He brings the competition level up. And it's just a bonehead play by a young guy. You can clean that up. Uh, it's pretty crazy. You've got to be on your best behavior to play college football these days. Bursting up the middle is Jonathan Franklin. And he's very close. In fact, he probably has another first down. Franklin, the sophomore, third in the pack 10 in Russian, at over 100 yards a game, 102 to be exact. Watch who makes the stop. And this is what I like about Jonathan Franklin. Not the first guy making the tackle, but what he brings, he has explosion. He's worked all offseason working on his strength and being able to see the holes. And the offensive line loves blocking for this guy. I was going to say, after this play, explain a little bit more why Jonathan Franklin is perfect for the pistol because it's basically an option offense. And uh, he runs it well. Here's Prehill, not as good a runner as Prince, maybe not as much speed, but he'll pull his way to the 32 yard line. And, why Jonathan Franklin, in my mind, fits this offense is because he's able to see. He's very elusive, and he's not a guy that's just going to run into a gap. When you play that old-fashioned standard offense, you kind of have an A gap or a B gap to run through. When you have the pistol offense, it's a read type of deal for the running back, and it fits his talent perfectly. The big bull, Coleman, though, now giving him a rest. Derek in the backfield. It's a second down and five for UCLA. Straight turn and give. Coleman, first down and more. Coleman at midfield down at the 45-yard line. The Cougars will move the change for UCLA. Big run for Coleman. DeMonte Horton finally brought him down after a gain of 23. See, what Coleman brings, he's a basher. So everybody is expecting him to be bashing, but once he gets to the outside he gets elusive and he can make some yards and the thing that Coleman lacks the Jonathan Franklin is that acceleration to take it to the house but you know what the one-two punch I love and I love what Coleman brings to this offense. Coleman still in three and a half to play first quarter UCLA scored on their initial drive they're up seven nothing quick hit to Josh Smith so he gets in the action 197 pound junior for UCLA And fans have to realize that this is a very young Bruin team, especially on offense. I mean, there's 
the only seniors that are really standing out is the offensive linemen, but everybody else are underclassmen that are still learning Child's offense. Second down and five. Talk about youth and good for Washington State after this play. Franklin is behind the quarterback. And uh, he's going to get minimal with any yardage. Mike Ledger with the middle linebacker made the play. Uh, well, 24 guys, James, are seeing their first college football action for Coach Wolf. And at any given snap, normally, four to seven freshmen are in there on this defense for Washington State. And that's very difficult when you're trying to win football games, but yet you got to teach young guys how to play. And both teams on both sides of the ball have to grow up fast if they want to win some football games in the Pac-10. At the third down for UCLA, got to get just to the 35-yard line for the first down. Trips to the right. Riho gets it. Tripped up. Short of the first down. Great play by Michael Ledgerwood. Really well done. His first year as a middle back for the 6'1", 231-pound junior. And uh, this is go-for territory for UCLA at about the 36-yard line. And you got to figure, well, you, you, your running game is your bread and butter. Jonathan Franklin has to figure out how to not allow that first guy to make that tackle. Then it's off to the races. Now, without question, Forbath can reach from this distance. However, fourth and one. This team's on a roll. Rick's making the good call here. Rio will throw, though. It looked good at the beginning. Now it's going to go Cougars' way. I'm surprised they threw the football, to be perfectly honest, at fourth and one. But a great play by the Cougar line, and the Bruins blow the opportunity and turn it over to Washington State. Travis Long made a huge play. So did the top foul. And it was just a it was just a great play by a hungry defensive lineman that wanted to, you know, Travis Long just makes an outstanding play, leaping over the block of Jonathan Franklin. And that's just a player that wants to make a play for his team. And I think that's ruled a fumble, too, because the snap is from the 37. So whether it was incomplete or a fumble, it was going to be Washington State ball. Out in the flat, it's complete to James Mon And let him touch the ball maybe 15, 20 times throughout the course of the game. So Washington State's defense, who hadn't done a whole lot right this year, got it done there. But that's what you got to get from your defense when you're on the road to step up and make plays just like Charles Long, number 89, just made. On second down, Tool again will throw it. Our first look at Marquise Wilson. Star in the making. Four catches of over 40-plus. He's got uh, 20 catches this year. Fifth in the Pac-10. Uh, he's just a talent. And I mean, not only a talent, but 340 yards, this young man averaging 17 yards a carry, like you said, two touchdowns, a freshman. I mean, so they have a couple players. They just got to step up when the lights come on. Third down and two. See what the Bruin defense can do here under a minute to play in the quarter. Two will throw again. He throws it over the middle, so on third and short, Washington State throws it, and Patrick Larimore makes the play in the middle. Stands 6'3", 250, the sophomore. Fourth down for the Cougs. And I, I have to say that I came into this set this season questioning the linebackers' play, and I have to say that they have stepped up at a high level, impactful level for the UCLA Bruins week in and week out. And, you know, I will say that is the absolute truth, ladies and gentlemen, because we do the Rick Neuheisel show every week together, and after the first couple of weeks, you were questioning that you're giving credit where credit is due. In fact, you told them in person how great they're playing. Here's a punt. Reed Forrest is down to the goal line. Is it in? Yeah, touchback just inside. So the Bruin, the entire defense is playing that much better. Uh, tackling uh, has come to the fore also. Another 50-plus punt, 54 yards that time. And that's great hustle by the special teams trying to make something happen big for their team. What UCLA has to do here, Billy Mack, is actually get the thing, get back to the first drive. They came out, moved the ball around, they had 
I would say, a, a, a dumb penalty, but they continue to move. They got to get back to their running game. What got them here, what got them to win against Houston, what got them to win against Texas was running the football. So get back to your bread and butter and get the flow of the offense, and then you can work on the pass game. Rick Neuheisel, as a head coach, has never lost to a Washington State team or to a Washington team for that matter. Jonathan Franklin kicks it outside at the 40. Franklin across midfield. He's down on the 43 yard line. You said get back to the running game. That's what they did. Go ahead and salute. Well done. Move the chains for the blue and gold. 32 yards for Jonathan Franklin. And what you see here is just a simple handoff. Jonathan Franklin finding the hole and getting outside. And then once he's outside, able to use that speed. And that's what Jonathan Franklin does well. Is once he's in the hole, he gets away from the cluster and breaks away and uses his speed to the outside. That was one person, one play. Brought to you by One West Bank, one person at a time. And Franklin now 11 carries for 88. They're the numbers. And he'll be on the sideline. It is humid here this afternoon. And the sun is now out shining brightly. Coleman will be in when we start quarter number two. So, so far, so good for Richard Brio In there for Kevin Prince. UCLA has seven on the board. After 15 here at the Rose Bowl, they're on top. Seven nothing quarter number two after this. Glad you're with us here at the Rose Bowl. A lot of energy around the campus uh, concerning the football program. Uh, this month of October has not been Good to the Bruins. Remember, they lost five times in October last year. Raheem Moore said, the worst five weeks of my life. Now, they haven't won in this month and in a while. Six consecutive October losses. So they're looking to start over this Washington State team. On the pitch, on the reverse, Josh Smith across the 40. Cuts it back inside. He's got some speed, and he's down at the 20-yard line. A razzle dazzle for the Bruins. Demonte Horton made the stop 22 big yards for UCLA. And Washington State's um, defensive coordinator made it very clear that you know he's he's been seeing this on film and it was gonna be it's a, it was gonna be a play that probably popped up and Josh Smith is the perfect person to actually run this particular play and work to perfection. Keeping it on the ground, although with the gadget play. Time of possession, sometimes it's not a telling stat, but it certainly was last week against Texas when the Bruins had it nearly 36 minutes. Franklin darts up the middle, inside the 10, first and goal for UCLA. Boy, he's got great vision, doesn't he, James? And it's kind of amazing to watch this young man run the football because the fact that he, in stature, is only 5'10", 190-something pounds, but he runs with impact. He's not a guy that just kind of takes a hit. He gives the linebacker, a defensive back a hit, and it's not one guy that can make that tackle. See if the Bruins keep bashing it. Coleman is behind Richard Brijo. And Coleman will get it up the middle. Coleman near the goal line, and then gets hit. And stood up at the two yard line. Well, it looked like he was going in and a good defensive play. It'll be second down. And I, I made a statement before this drive is that they got to get back to what they do best. And that's actually running the football with the two-headed monster. May it be Jonathan Franklin or Derek Coleman. That's Sean Scheller, who is uh, going off the field for UCLA. And Sean Scheller, a magnificent story. A guy who's played, played football on both sides, defense, offense. He was injured, uh, has worked himself back. And I think when I give credit to this offensive line, you know Mike Harris, Eddie Williams, and Darius Savage, but Shellard had probably has played and has been the most improved lineman week in and week out for the UCLA Bulls. Yeah, that's been a great story, that old line. Uh, experience as far as class-wise, but not playing-wise. Lots of seniors up front. Here's the give up the middle. Touchdown, UCLA, Derek Coleman. And this is what the Bruins been doing since they decided to run the football. And like I said, the two-headed monster, Coleman and Franklin, wonderful job. 
Franklin gets a touchdown. Now Coleman comes back and matches him up one. Kai Forbath, best kicker in the country. Hasn't missed an extra point all year. Still hasn't missed. As he bangs it through. Derek Coleman, touchdown for UCLA. He had one late last week, 14-0 Bruins. Yards, 204 to 35. The accolades and awards on campus at UCLA as we come back out now to the Rose Bowl. You know, Derek Coleman scoring the touchdown, James, and I know you're so proud of him because of the fact that he's also a special team star, isn't he? I know, you know, sometimes you see guys put in work, but Derek Coleman not only plays, you know, tailback and scores touchdowns, but last week against Texas, he made three key tackles on special teams. He's on the kickoff coverage. I mean, make the kickoff return. He's the guy that's down there making tackles on punts. I mean, just an amazing guy, an amazing athlete doing a lot of things for the Bulls. On the kick, Barton out to the 27-yard line, and he's out of bounds. Rebecca, some of very special people were honored uh, during a timeout just a short while ago. That's right. We're honoring a couple UCLA touchdowns and also the group known as Operation Mend. They were honored for ongoing efforts to provide surgeries to U.S. service members injured in Iraq and Afghanistan. Amongst those on the field, Dr. Timothy Miller of UCLA, who is performing the surgeries. It's just great to see UCLA and their efforts to help the soldiers. Wonderful stuff. and. Uh, this crowd very appreciative when they were all announced in the end zone. Before the play, quick flag. We're a minute and a half plus here into the second Illegal quarter. substitution, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Again, I mentioned earlier, uh, UCLA had eight penalties, eight penalties last week uh, in their victory over Texas. Washington State, the second least penalized team in the conference. So if they're doing anything right, they, they've been uh, pretty disciplined in that department. But they're down 14 nothing. Jeff Toole will have it. Flushed out of the pocket. Here comes the pressure. There's the throw. Only a Bruin there. Incomplete. Out of bounds. Sean Westgate is there trying to cradle it in. All 5'11", 217 of him. Not imposing. Boy, he's all over the but place. But you know, what Sean Westgate brings is energy, and he just seems to always be in the right place at the right time. 11 tackles, a team high for the year and a career high last week to earn those Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Week honors. And actually, he leads the team with 32 tackles. Big burst up the middle. There's a flag down Montgomery, though, inside the 30-yard line, but there's a flag back at the 32. It might be a hold, and it might be coming back. Sheldon Price was able to bring him down, and... Uh, this is the kind of a season, couple of years. Offense, Hoots offense. number 72, 10-yard penalty, second down. And that's one of the better offensive linemen. Flag there, B.J. Guerra, the junior. He and Zach Williams are the bell cows up front. And this is, this is just a terrible job where an offensive hole, and you know what, do you? has to come up and make that tackle. He has to fill that gap. But going back to Washington, you, Washington State, you finally get a break and you get it brought back. Momentum shifts, field position shifts for the favor of the Bruins. Laquan Mitz is now in in the backfield. He's a power back, 6'2", 230 junior. And he's gonna try to power his way for yardage and he's got more than that. He's got a first down, so Mitz gets into the fray and gets a first down. And it actually looks like um, Washington State has found something on that right side of the offensive line. 24 yards, J-Dub. Here it is again. And that's basically having some young guys in there, and what happens is that they got to make some tackles. I mean, guys are filling gaps, but this is the problem that they had in the first two games where guys were not making tackles, and I don't care who is playing running back or what type of offense. If you can't make a tackle, you're not going to make any plays. Sign it out. Incomplete. That was Isaiah Barton. He was running before the catch. Yeah, I mean, it, it harkens back. If you're missing tackles and it's UCLA, you go back to that second half of game one where they allowed over 300 yards against Kansas State. A game they, quite frankly, should have won. Uh, they were playing well enough to win. 
on the road in front of that purple haze, but uh, they couldn't get it done. Bad defense. And sometimes when you, you start playing and you start playing young guys, you know, out of gap control. I mean, I think this is what happens with this defensive line. You know, Todd Howard, the defensive line coach, starts putting new guys in, and they lose the gap responsibility. Tool on second down will take off and run. Sandwiched at the 46 yard line. It'll be about three yards short of the first down. Westgate was there, seventh in top 10 tackle. You mentioned best tackler on this team is Tool. Took off that time for a And that is exactly what happens is that up top you see number 94 gets out contained instead of in line and getting pushed around. They got to be able to push up field and not lose gap control. And Tool did a wonderful job just tucking the ball. And, and, and moving the chain. Third, uh, third down defense has not been good for UCLA this year. Nearly 50% of the time, the opposition has converted. And this is a third down, and they're going big, and they're going to Karstetter, and he's got it. Jared Karstetter beat Aaron Hester. First down and much more inside the 10. And I told you that this was going to be a great matchup, and I, the favor goes to... Washington State because I think Hester, they've been picking on him all season long, and he has to figure out how to make some plays because if I was an offensive coordinator, I would continue to throw the ball in that direction until he makes a play. Yeah, JT has caught a ball now in 20 consecutive games. That's Carl Stetter. Tool trying to make something out of nothing to the eight-yard line. And getting back, this is just basically a simple nine route, a streak. And he just out, and Hester is a pretty fast guy, but when you the lights come on, it just seems that he plays a little slower. And it was just a nice throw and catch by Washington State. Had a career high eight catches against the Trojans last week. Second down, goal. Four wides in the plan. Now Mitz will shift to the right of Tool. Bruins rush four. Tool. Hit, throws, touchdown! Jeffrey Solomon. Nine yards and a score. The Cougars are back in it. Solomon threw for a touchdown last week. This week, he's on the receiving end. And, you know, outstanding play by Washington State. What you see here is called a post corner. And actually, he pushes up on Raheem and breaks away. And Raheem has to, it's a one on one. It's your guy. You have to go out there and cover. I thought it was a tremendous play and a great matchup by the offensive coordinator by Washington State. Rasu will kick it through. I mentioned that Solomon threw for a touchdown last week. He was actually a high school quarterback in the Seattle area. That time, he's on the receiving end. Jeff Toole, the touchdown throw after getting knocked down by UCLA, 14-7. Welcome back in. All season long, Champion Apparel will be showcasing the history and traditions of the Pac-10. Today we highlighted, highlighted the UCLA Bruins. Champion, it's how you play. James Washington is alongside one of 13 former Bruins in the broadcast media. I was reading that in the notes this week, James. You know that? You're one of 13? Uh, we just got lucky. Man. On radio and TV. <laughs> it's always wonderful to work with Billy Mack. Josh Smith will be back deep for UCLA. Well, it, it's not quite a, a Texas-UCLA situation, but the UCLA motivation. Uh, they've had some prosperity, and uh, don't let the underdog uh, get back in the game. And, Obviously, Washington State, Coach Wolf, they were saying that all week. Hey, if the Bruins can do it to Texas, we can do it to UCLA. You know, and Nate Chandler gets back there and catches it. I he's mean, a he's tight a, end. He anyway. does. He does everything. Yeah, he's I mean, a tight end. He's yeah. a, he's he a, he's a, a tight end. He's a tackle on defense, <laughs> a tight end on offense, fullback when you need a fullback. All right, they haven't really let Brio throw it down the field. And you got two touchdowns on the board, so no reason to do that. But we'll see if they test that ability here on this series. Ball is on the 26-yard line for UCLA. I think I'm, I'm big on just sticking to what works. Your pistol offense, you've been running the football. This is what your offensive line knows how to do. So 
but he will throw it off a play action. Step away from the pressure well. Now he is throwing it down the field and a late flag. How about that? I don't know if he could have gotten to the ball, but Randall Carroll, another speedster, as I mentioned, those two state titles in the 100 and 200 as a high school sprinter. The sophomore was the intended receiver. You can only you can only touch the guy so much. I mean, Randall Carroll. Pass interference. Defense number 21. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And what Randall Carroll's doing is the stutter move, and then the safety comes over and actually causes the pass interference because he has to allow the guy an opportunity to catch the football. And by the way, Randall Carroll caught his first ball of the season in the uh, first quarter. He did not have a catch coming into this game, so he was the intended receiver. Chima Wachiku was the one who was flagged. Derek Coleman behind Riho. He's going to get it. Coleman gets a couple of yards after contact. Out to the 45-yard line. Bruins coming off of back-to-back 260-plus -back rushing yards in the last two games. And what you see in this pistol offense, it just gives you a variety of looks. And it, it's very difficult on a defense, a defensive end, a linebacker, because you have so many moving parts to this particular offense, and you don't know who's going to get the ball. And when you're able to pass the ball out of it, that's just one more added ingredient. Already 144 yards rushing. Going to get about six more there, so up to 150 yards on the ground for UCLA. Derek Coleman, he wears on that defense 235 bullish pounds right there in the junior and you know running back coach Moses basically says Wayne Moses says we put Coleman in there to bang 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 and loosen it up for Jonathan Franklin to take it to the house again the call is up the middle one man to beat he got him there for more yardage Coleman kicks it to the outside and he's inside the 15 to the 14 yard line that's hat on hat and number 33 won in that man to man battle he beat Coyman, and then Horton finally busted him out of bounds after 36 yards. And he's just so determined. I mean, every in practice, what these young running backs do, they not only break through the line of scrimmage, they're trying to they run to the end zone after every carry because they rotate running backs. So they get used to running to the end zone, no matter if they start on the 20 or if they start on the 40. There's something that they just do in practice Week in and week out. Boy, great combination. Franklin is back in there now. Brijo throws incomplete. Trying to make a one-handed grab is Taylor Embry. 88 career catches coming into this game. Unable to flag that one down. Second down. And this is about timing. I mean, Brijo has enough time in the pocket. Embry just has to be able to... It's a tough catch. He's real high, but he goes after it. But it's about timing and reps. You know, as Brijo gets comfortable in, in making these tosses, that's a touchdown. Well, Embry's 6'3", Horton on him is only 5'10", so the height mismatch is what Mark Chow was trying to exploit. Kick it outside to Franklin, trying to turn the corner. Flag down, touchdown, but there's a flag down. You would think an illegal block somewhere here, holding UCLA. Holding. Offense, number seven, 10-yard penalty. Replay second down. So take it off the board and move it back. Morell Presley, the guilty party. Morell Presley is just trying hard. He misses the box and arm gets hooked around, you know, the defender. But that's just a young man just trying to make a play. So, I mean, you can't fault it. You hope that he doesn't hold, takes points off the board. But Presley has truly worked hard to learn this F position, and he has become a solid blocker for the Bruins. Franklin already over 100 yards. Coleman, though, is back in. Trying to pull over the line. Down he goes in a heap at the 16-yard line. Bruins have to get down to the 4-yard line for a first down. Coming up uh, on about halfway through the second quarter, 14.
watching the Texas game has to give Washington State some type of of hope that they can come in and upset a team. Throwing four for six on third down. Here we go. Rio throwing for the flag. Excellent coverage. Nolan Washington probably has his best game in that department. And uh, this we see often from the time Rick has taken the sideline at UCLA. He is not hesitant to give a stern lecture to his quarterback coming off the field. We understand we've had some uh, technical difficulties. We're going to continue to call this game, and hopefully everything will get rectified. Four bath is on. 34 yarder. This should be automatic. That's money. That's bank. Four bath and a 17 7. And like it, nothing like having. All right, so we'll break away. Kai Forbath now eight away from tying the NCAA career record. They're going to officially credit Kai with a 33-yard kick. 7.45 was the time. A 2.45-yard drive for UCLA, and they're up 17-7. to Isaiah Barton will be back for Washington State. Bruins looking to go 3-2 and on the year and level their Pac-10 record at 21. Well, the defense got to come out here and set a presence. They have to come out on this drive and kind of take control of this game because the last two drives, they basically have given up yardage and has given confidence to this Washington State team. Let's go down and see what Rebecca's got on the sidelines. Well, guys, after that field goal, it's only fitting that we have one of the most prolific field goal kickers of all time, John Lee of UCLA. Now, you still hold the NCAA record for field goals per game at 1.84. What does it mean to still have that after 25 years? Well, I thought it will break soon, but wow, it just kept on going. But uh, I'll take it as long as Kai Forbath breaks it. That'll be fine with me. And this guy definitely played with Rick Neuheisel. He was your holder. What was he like as a teammate? As a teammate, especially being a holder, uh, he me coming out as a freshman, true freshman, starting the first game, he told me, settle down, no need to get nervous. There's 100,000 people, but no problem. So he calmed me down quite a bit, and it was a big help. Thanks so much, John, guys. Thank you, Rebecca. And you know all about John Lee, don't you? Actually, JW. John Lee actually made me the MVP of the Fiesta Bowl in 85. Um, I intercept the ball, and I take it down, and John Lee actually ends up kicking the field goal to get the job done. Well, and and Rick, looked, Rick looked real good down there in the, uh, <laughs> in the position holding. He did that a lot, didn't he? Yes, he did. Look at John. There he goes. He says, as long as Kai Forbath uh, breaks it, he's cool with it. Tool went down on the sack. Winston now for Washington State. It'll bring up a third down now for the Cougars. And what the UCLA Bruins have to do here is actually start tackling the football. Get back to what they have done well. Is tackle the football. May it be screen passes. May the, the defensive lineman. And you'll see where Akeem Ayers, number 10 in your program, now he'll go down as a defensive lineman. And he will rush a drop as Tool. He's hit. He's nearly intercepted. Or is it picked? No, incomplete is the call. Incomplete as Sheldon Price was there coming for the Bruins. Marquise Wilson was the intended receiver. And just to give some credit where credit is due, while Rebecca was talking to John Lee, it was David Carter who registered the sack on Tool a couple of plays ago. It'll be fourth down. And I, like I, I've said that this defense had to come out and make a stop and reestablish their presence in this football game. And they did a wonderful job in that possession. And Sheldon Price did a wonderful job breaking on the ball. Taylor Embry. You see Reed Forrest, very uh, different kind of uh, presentation when he comes up to the football. He takes a couple of steps to the right and kind of sidewinds it down the field. It'll be a fair catch after a 38-yard punt. By the way, each and every Monday at 10.30, it debuts. It's the Rick Neuheisel UCLA Football Weekly Show starring James Washington. James will break down field, uh, film with that guy. They do it on Sunday, and then you get to see it on Monday. They do a wonderful job, though. I mean, in you, the do, do? No, you do no, do a wonderful no, no, job. No, I don't do a wonderful job. I thought I say, you said you do a wonderful no, job. I say they do a wonderful oh, okay. job 
in the film room. And when I say that as a crew, as a, you know, a film crew and a producer, Pat puts all that together, yeah, man. Yeah, it's a good show. It's, a, it's fun. Here's a handoff to Franklin. Franklin outside. He's got room. Somebody lost a hat. It's one of the UCLA linemen. Down to the 32-yard line. That was Ryan Taylor. Well, you know what? He got Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Week. He wants everybody to see what he looks like. So I said, I'll just lose my helmet. 32-yard run, first down UCLA. It's not often that you see this, but, you know, Jonathan Franklin, actually Ryan Taylor and Jonathan Franklin are roommates. So he's actually, I don't need a helmet to block for my roommate. <laughs> Look at you kind of just get out of here. He just got his hands on the helmet. 40, uh, 14 carries, 135 yards now for Frank. It's a huge numbers, and we're still in the second quarter. Malcolm Jones now an opportunity. Malcolm Jones out of Oaks Christian. Oaks Christian was on our uh, high school football game of the week last night against Westlake. Uh, he's a Gatorade National Player of the Year, first ever to come to UCLA. He's a freshman, there he is. And what Malcolm brings is two things. He actually brings explosion, and he's able to get to the outside and take it to the house. The thing is that he fumbled early, so now he has to gain his confidence back with that and not, you know, tiptoe, but just be Malcolm and do the things that he has to do. Rio, pump fake, throw it. Too far, incomplete. End zone, intended for Josh Smith. Got a couple of coons down there looking at him. What I like today is that Norm Chow is throwing the ball and stretching the defense. I mean, for a few games there, guys were trying to figure out that they have a route over 10 yards. And now what he's doing is stretching the defense, and what that will open up is for the underneath routes, the curl routes, the crossing routes, probably in the second half. Let's not forget the guy calling the plays as a two to three Heisman quarterbacks during his coaching career. Jonathan Franklin is in the backfield, and we've got a timeout. Timeout Washington State with 5-13 remaining here in the second quarter and a 10-point deficit for the Cougars. And I'm going to get back to a, a story a little bit with um, Jonathan Franklin and Ryan Taylor, the Pac-10 player, offensive Pac-10 player of the week. How wonderful is it to have you as a tailback have your center, starting center, as your roommate? So you make sure you have some great conversation. And, I, and when you have that, you know the other offensive linemen are going to come over and hang out with the, you know, the running back. Big so guy, I, little guy <laughs> kind of a situation. got to love it, man. Who'd you room with? Huh? Who'd you room with at UCLA? I actually room with regular students. I didn't room with athletes. <laughs> was, was that a purposeful thing? I just think that, I, you know. I'm Preferential a, treatment I for James a, Washington? I am a more well-rounded oh, oh, um, okay. athlete. I, I, I wasn't stuck in a bubble where I just kind of hung out with athletes. I hung out. You're a true renaissance man. That's right. I'm stepping out of my box. And that's what I try. As I mentor these young guys, you got to step out your box. Again. Total offense. Bruins coming up on 300 yards or 294. Cougars at just 115. Franklin is your running back on third down. Got to get to the 22-yard line. Caught. Jerry Johnson, he's a big target too. A lot of height on these wideouts, huh? 6'4", 208, he's a sophomore. And, and Jerry Johnson has been trying to figure out how he's going to work himself in, in, on the field for some playing time. With Rosario going down, this gives this young man an opportunity to wait, you know, and watch him make a play. And he has a lot of skills. He's just got to be consistent. And he's really worked hard on concentrating. Yeah, if you're joining us late, Nelson Rosario was carted off uh, earlier in the first quarter. We haven't seen him since. Malcolm Jones spun down after very minimal yardage. Second down for UCLA. And what I don't like at this point in time is that Malcolm, instead of him running like how he ran in high school, loose and wild, he's running trying to protect the ball. And he's more worried about Am I going to fumble the ball instead of just hitting the holes like he did when he first started the first couple of games? All he needs is time, but he knows that the surest way to lose to an underdog is to turn the football over. And that's got to be first and foremost on his mind. A little anxious on the line, probably on UCLA. Ball. ball start. 
Offense, number we'll 65. go against the Bruins. Five-yard penalty, second down. Mike Harris. He's in there for Mike Akia, who is still nursing that bad ankle on the Bruin front line. Well, you see, no, actually, I think Mike Harris was the starter, and he actually came back and won his position. Akia actually ended up getting hurt, and then Mike Harris, who has been playing magnificent at that tackle spot, protecting the back of the quarterback. I mean, a lot of interchangeable parts up there. And that's when you have players. You have a lot of competition. Yeah. makes players better. Riho. Going to get hit. Throws. Caught. Five-yard line. Two-yard line, Ricky Marbury. He's a guy that just makes plays. Had a chance to see him a couple times in high school when we did games with him. And like I said, lined him up all over the field. Just a great athlete and a great get for UCLA. And what I like about Ricky is that he does this in practice. He is the energy bunny. I mean, he, I'm telling you, this young man brings so much energy. He blocks well, he's aggressive. He got a penalty early and now he comes back and get a first down for the ball. Bruins quickly up to the line. Franklin, the soft tackle at the goal line, but not in. Second down for UCLA. Trying to up their lead here. Just over three minutes to play in the second quarter. It's been a great last two weeks for Rick Neuheisel and UCLA after stumbling and fumbling their way to an 0-2 start. And I think uh, Richard Brijo has done a nice job controlling this offense and calling the plays and executing the plays that are that's coming from up top from Norm Child. You saw the pertinent numbers on this drive. Brijo has still got it rolling. He scampers past one, and that's it. Forward progress maybe to the three-yard line. It'll be third down for UCLA, third and goal, and he threw a shoe, and he's desperately trying to get it back on. And not only that, you have um, Barr, who's supposed to be in the option position. He didn't block anybody, but he wasn't in the, in the pitch position for Brijo to toss it to him. So. I mean, that's when you have some young guys out there, and they're just kind of running around. All right, what are you calling here? Third down. Yep. Crawling into the headset of Norm Chow. You, you know this team pretty well. Third down at about the three-yard line. I'm going with the bread and butter. It'll be a, a timeout for UCLA. I believe they're just letting the clock run down a little bit, and then they're going to call the timeout. Discuss things over for this third down call. Rick and Norm. And uh, Richard Brijo, that'll be the uh, triumvirate trying to figure out what to do here. And let's just go elimination. Quarterback sneak does not work because Brijo is not a running quarterback. The best guy that's on the field is Jonathan Franklin. The next thing that comes off that is a bootleg, meaning a naked blue boot that has guys running a post corner and a drag route. And you have to trust that Brijo can make the right decision with the ball. Let's pursue perfection with Lexus. And uh, I don't know because of technical difficulties if you saw this, but it's Kai Forbath, best in the nation, banging it through. He's now eight away from tying the NCAA career record. He kicked field goals of 39 and 49 uh, last week. That was a 33-yarder. He's 79 for 92 during his career. Lexus pursuing perfection with Kai Forbath. Well, they have the offense on the field. So, I mean, it's a, it's a couple situations here. You run an option. If you're going to pass the ball, the quarterback has to have the option to run or pass. If you're going to run the ball, you just do what you do and basically run at the heart of the defense. This time they've got Coleman behind him with the pistol. Rio. Looking, throwing right at the flag. Did he get it there? No. Incomplete. Wanted Taylor Embry. Fourth down, and it's four bath time. And I'm having a huff, I'm having a hard time with actually Taylor Embry this year. I mean, this is a guy who's had sure hands all season long. I mean, since he's been here, he's a junior, and he was a go-to guy. And then all of a sudden, this particular season. He has not been the guy who catches the ball with his hands. And it's like it's a lot of things that's going on with him. But he has to step up. And I had big, big expectations for him this season. 20 yards. Four back. 
Got it. And we knew he'd be the big weapon for UCLA coming into the year. And he has not disappointed. 27 Bruins over Washington State. So there have been some injuries, and Rebecca, you've got an update. What you got? Well, yes, guys, Rosario Nelson is done for the day. He has a left ankle sprain. He will not return. And it's a great news that Jerry Johnson is continuing to step up for the receiving core. Good stuff. So uh, there's uh, Nelson Rosario, as mentioned, getting carted off early. So Rebecca on the spot giving us that information. That's a big loss for the Bruins. He's a big target, and if they were going to try to get their passing game going today, um, Nelson Rosario is a, a big component in the passing game for the UCLA Bruins. But the positive is that they got a lot of young guys that's just itching to get an opportunity to get on the field like Johnson. You know, Randall Carroll, Ricky Marbury. These young men is just looking for time, and my deal is the more time you get on the field, and you show up, the more time you'll be on the field the next time. Well, it's a, a good opportunity if the Bruins can continue to uh, up this lead to get other guys on the field. It's Cal next weekend. It's the double weekender for Southern California college football fans. USC will be up at Stanford, and the Bruins will be up at Berkeley. So the Bay Area will be crawling with Bruins and Trojans. It should be an interesting weekend. And then, of course, the Bruins have that bye and then Oregon on the Thursday night national TV game. So that's looking ahead to some meat of the schedule is, uh, is, is coming up as far as the Pac-10. Nice to maybe get off to a good start against a team you should defeat in Washington State. Right now it's 20-7. to And not only this, you have to continue to set the tone on defense. You have been allowed to have rest and sit. So it's not like you're coming in playing plays you'll see some young guys step in here they got some some nickel defense working and a lot of young guys are getting an opportunity to play by the way that game next week in Cal, that's our national game on fsn so that means barry and petros and rebecca are all going to be up there so and petros is excited and here's a young guy number one dietrich riley i mean he is a physical football player that just came up and make that tackle carl winston was the ball carrier now on second down and five, again on the delay, Winston finds some room to the outside. Going to get enough to move the chains, I think, although the spot now is going to be short, just short of the 30-yard line. So it'll set up a third down and about a half a foot with a minute and a half remaining here in the second. And what Washington State has to do here, Billy Mack, they have to kind of get something going before halftime so they can go back to the clipboard and say what's working and what's not working. Just trying to get the first down. The sneak will stop the clock. They can reset quickly. Of course, this uh, plays into the hands of Washington State anyway. They're usually on a, a bit of a two-minute offense with their no-huddle, up-tempo. That's what they want to do. So this is uh, not out of their norm. And this is kind of playing in their hands, but hopefully that the defense is, is, is ready for this. I mean, you have different guys in the field. Uh, Abbott is at the corner position. Cougars have two timeouts to play with. We're at the 30-yard line. Tool in trouble. Hit, throws deep in the air. Boy, a little wrestling match around the 25-yard line. Good no call. And Marquise Wilson, the intended receiver. They got another freshman, Christoph Williams, uh, who has been battling turf toe. Once they get him out on the field, too, he and Wilson and Karstetter. That's going to be a great threesome. There's a former lineman at Washington State. He, he's fired up, and I think he does have reason because they called a pass and a finish on for UCLA, but should have worked the same way. Up in the air, incomplete. Raheem Moore was on the coverage. Daniel Blackledge was the intended receiver. I'll tell you what, Wolf is still hot. And this secondary will be tested because when you're down, I mean, you have to be able to make a play and He's looking back. Sheldon Price is looking back for the football, and that's the reason why it's a no call. Because once the ball is in the air, the ball is up for everyone. If Sheldon was not looking back for the football, then it's passing the field. Comes, uh, out of the mouth right there, the former defensive back at UCLA, and Super Bowl champion. And the pros, tool. Good protection. Throwing it down the middle. At the 45-yard line, boy, he just threaded it right in to Jeffrey Solomon. 
Solomon had the touchdown catch earlier. Now he has a 24-yarder to move the chains for the Cougs. And this is a young freshman needs to go for that football instead of making a bad angle. But that's what happened when you don't get that many reps. Uh, Dietrich Riley takes a bad angle, but he's going to be an outstanding football player when he gets more reps. Tool will roll and run and go out of bounds. So uh, remember, they have a good kicker too in uh, Grasso. So any kind of points here would be great for Washington State. They have to start at their own 20 yard line. And again, when you're as deep into the abyss as this team has been over the last two years, uh, you'll look for any kind of a positive, and that's exactly what they could get with any kind of points here. There's your kicker, Grasso. Had a career best 56 yarder against Oklahoma State earlier this year, and he's a crusty high ground. Local kid. Lots of Southern California kids, by the way, for Washington State. Caught, first down, Blackledge again at the 34 yard line. He beat Dietrich Riley. And, and Chuck Fuller has to realize that they're only really working the one side of the field, which is the right side of the offense, left side of the defense, where they've been their strong pass attack. They have not worked to the field side. I was they've been worked to the boundary. I, I was uh, surprised maybe Washington State didn't call a timeout there. I think it's UCLA calling the timeout, although Washington State has two left, so they'll take that from the Bruins. Bruins now have one left in Washington State. They have two. And I said early before this drive started that Washington State had to come out and build some confidence and continuity into this team. By the way, Patrick, JJ, will be uh, with you at halftime, taking you through. Those, those two will also be with you after the game. JJ Stokes, by the way, as you see our halftime analysis stats, where is a Cormac Carney? Down in Orange County, I'll give you a hint there. And uh, UCLA quarterback breakdown. J.J. Stokes was the honorary captain today, so congratulations to J.J. You know what? He was an outstanding player when he was at UCLA. And Whoa, you know, one of I the best. Just, and I can just imagine. I mean, and I've become good friends with J.J. We're going to do a couple of things together um, up north. And he loves the Bruins, but he also enjoying re being retired. Uh, yeah. Two catches stick out in my mind from J.J. <laughs> Stokes, by the way. The one against USC, uh -huh. the John Barnes game. Yes. And then uh, the big touchdown catch against Washington here at the Rose Bowl when it went nearly the length of the field. Uh, just a couple of great memories of J.J. Stokes. And he'll be with Patrick. In half time. 23 seconds left. Tool. Good protection. Over the middle. Got a man caught. And then dropped. Incomplete. There's a flag down in the backfield. Oh, should have been caught. And good protection. It's great protection. It's very difficult to cover when, when you're not getting a Personal play. foul, hands to the face. Number 89, defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. If anything now, uh, this will get Washington State in field goal range, so they can take a couple shots at the end zone with 18 seconds remaining, and they still have two timeouts. And this UCLA Bruins defensive line, yeah, you know, he's just trying to get to the quarterback. He throws his hands up. That's Nate Chandler. They moved him inside. Awama Bay Odigizua has uh, really earned some time for UCLA, the freshman defensive end, so they wanted to get him some more snaps so they moved Chandler inside remember he's a former tight end and the thing is when you have young guys you know Oa comes into the game number 94 and when he was in college he's just strong he's a very strong athlete but what he has to do is understand that he can go at a full speed and get to the quarterback and not think too much and the only thing that stops players on defense is when you start thinking it takes away from your reaction time yeah, well, the Bruins figure they could rush on Paul Wolf's team. Washington State has allowed more sacks than anyone in the past. 13 coming in. Bruins have one here this afternoon. Carter got it. Two with Montgomery behind him. Over the middle. Caught. Touchdown! Daniel Blackledge has got it. So 80 yards for Washington State in the last couple of minutes. That's an 18-yard touchdown catch. 
10 plays, 80 yards. There's the capper. This is how you finish it, and this is building confidence. Abbott has to play some defense, and I think that Washington State has opened up a can of worms for the Bruins because if they yeah. have time to throw the football, the defensive backs have not covered at, at all today. Kick is good. Ball game, 2014 at the half, although we still have 13 seconds remaining in it, and I'll tell you what, Rick is going to be unhappy, and rightfully so. Boy, perfectly in between three Bruins. And that's what happens. I mean, you not only have to, we came in here and I thought the matchup, and you personally thought the matchup was going to be the receiving core against the secondary. And even though the score says different, at this point in time, I think the receiving core of Washington State has outplayed the defensive backs of UCLA. So 13, uh, 14 points on the board for Washington State and some encouragement and reason to smile. Uh, this team was as down as it could be after the thumping that USC put on them. They, they really thought they were gonna give the Trojans a game. We talked to the coaches before last week's game against USC. They had a certain amount of bravado, swagger. They thought they were gonna come out and play a good ball game and it was just two steps backwards for Washington State. And, and football is about confidence and when you allow a team to go down within two to three minutes and score, they go in the locker room with a different attitude. Now, if you stop them, I mean, and it plays twofold. And when I say the secondary hasn't played very well the first half, the defensive pass rush hasn't been able to get there neither. So as a defensive back, you're only good as your pass rush. And if the quarterback has time, it's kind of like seven on seven, and it's very tough. Grazu will boot it in. They did this a couple times also last weekend, this week, trying to eliminate a big play. But, you know, Forbath has got a leg, and uh, you're already on the 41-yard line. you got, what, 13 seconds. You've got a timeout. So I think you got to give it at least a shot. I, I you know, I, I don't understand I that. I don't understand that one neither. I'm saying you, you, your team is moving. The confidence is growing for your Washington State offense. And then you... you pooch kick it and you <laughs> give them great field position great field position you have one timeout you said has one timeout they can throw the ball down and call timeout they're allowed to throw the ball over the over the middle of the field because they have one timeout Brio will throw incomplete and you can still get a play in Got to get it quick though, but uh, you got eight seconds. You got to call a timeout to get out of bounds uh, right away, but he missed the target that time. Uh, looking on the inside, eight seconds remaining. Here in the first half, remember Patrick and JJ at the half, they're getting set. And this is where Nelson Rosario is missed deep. When you run that deep end behind the nine route that goes up and clears out, Rosario is usually that guy that's catching that post over Six the middle. Six foot five, Nelson Rosario. Riho, they're going to give it up the middle. Yeah. That'll be that. Jonathan Franklin gets hit. Bruins will let the clock run out. So UCLA, big favor. Big favor coming in after beating a top 25 Houston team convincingly here at the Rose Bowl. Then traveling down to Texas and shocking everyone. Are uh, in a ball game, 2014. Rebecca's with Coach. Coach, 80 yards and a touchdown for Washington State to end this half. What what corrections do you make with your defense? Well, we have to we have to do all the basic fundamentals. We just played a little bend and break, and they showed they're good enough to go down the field and make plays. We we got to get a little more aggressive, and we got to get our locker room excited about playing the second half. Over 300 yards for your offense. What can you say about Brijo's performance? Yeah, but we shooting ourselves in the foot with some penalties and some missed opportunities. We've got to go play a better second half. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Rebecca. Not pleased as expected. Rick would expect more. The number one thing this week, don't have a letdown. Washington State is in this game. Coming up the half, Patrick O'Neill and JJ will have analysis stats. Where are they now with Cormac Carney and a breakdown of the UCLA quarterback situation when we come back after this. Well, the Cougars, it's gotta be an emotional locker room for them, uh, 20 to 14 down by uh, six points to UCLA. And you can see they are coming out 
little fire in their eyes. Let's take a look at the stats, James. Uh, just one turnover in the game. It's when UCLA actually fumbled the ball on a fourth down. So turnovers have not been an issue, and total yardage definitely in favor of the Bruins. Well, the, in favor of the Bruins, 223 yards on the ground. Jonathan Franklin, 140 yards um, in the first half. That's getting back to the basics. But the thing is, since the first drive, you had Brijo, what I think of five or six, and then since then he's been, you know, not getting the job done. He has to convert and actually complete passes. I think he's only completed four passes since that first drive. And five penalties for UCLA. Remember, a touchdown from Jonathan Franklin was taken off the board for the Bruins. Nine for 18, 96 for Brijo. Uh, you you got to remember, three out of the four games this year, UCLA quarterbacks have not thrown for 100 yards. So the passing game hasn't been there all season long. And I don't know what it is. Is it just execution? And when I say execution, I mean being able to actually throw and complete the ball. And I know you see Kevin Prince sitting there thinking that this was an opportunity to get that passing game going, and he has to sit this one out. Yeah, Prince on the year has only completed 46% of his passes. That is not very good in that regard. Uh, not a ton of yards. Uh, has, uh, has managed the team well though the last couple of weeks. I think that's been the most important thing, managing this team. And it's pretty much managing it, especially in the pistol offense. And I think they have not been able to run the standard pistol offense that they ran in against Texas nor Houston because the fact that they didn't want to put that much pressure on the quarterback and they've ran a, a three-step drop type of system that allows him to get the ball out fast but he just has to complete those balls just like he did the first half. Well, there was a ton of coach speak from Rick Neuheisel during the course of the week. Just because we played well, should we cancel Christmas? That was one of his great lines. And he just wanted to see how hungry uh, this team was, see if they could continue to drive and have success. And right now, they are in a game uh, with the big underdog, Washington State. And the Cougs have it with Isaiah Barton to start the second half, moving right to left in their uh, white and red visiting uniforms and they will set up shop just outside the 30 yard line here to start the second half. And if I'm Washington State, I'll come out and do exactly what I did at the end of the first half is let's test the secondary and make the defense put pressure on the quarterback because those are two things that you have to look in this second half. Will UCLA's defense be able to apply pressure to the quarterback or will the secondary be able to cover? James Montgomery. Again, if you weren't with us earlier, compartmental syndrome is what he had. Got hit in the game last year in the calf against SMU. Everything was uh, all right for the most part until the next day uh, when it was hurting very badly, was burning. He went in. There was no blood going to the muscle. They had to uh, perform emergency surgery. He could have lost a leg or his life, to be perfectly honest. And uh, it took a while for him to come back. And he had a 70-yard run against Montana State this year, although they lost Ricky Galvin, the true freshman running back on the first play of the season, broke a forearm against Oklahoma State. So much was going to be expected of him. So the fallback was on Montgomery to come back even that much quicker. And it's very difficult when you're trying to build a team and you start losing guys. Um, UCLA has the same scenario with Dayton. You know, expectation was very high for Dayton. And then you go back to Washington State, who has a lot of guys who've had playing time, but if they're injured and they're not in the game, they lose that experience. Third down, one sack, that's it. Not a, not a ton of pressure by this UCLA line. Or front seven on two, they've given a pretty decent time. And on third down, two over the middle, exactly right there. He had the time, he found the man, and the perfect guy to get a first down for you. Jared Karstetter gets the grab and they'll move the chains for the Cougars. And I think Karstetter has been a thorn in the Bruins' side. I mean, he is a big receiver, but not only that, he catches the ball with his hands, and he has been giving this entire secondary fit all day long. A couple of TDs. Last week, as we mentioned earlier, big target, too, and that experience that he's got. Montgomery slashes his way up to midfield. 
and here come the Cougars again with the football, starting it off second half. And that's what they have to do, come out, the Cougars have to come out the second half and just establish a, a nice running game that they can run and then play action. And what I would do here is that basically you try to get a first down, but you got to stretch this defense and loosen it up a little bit. Now the, the cat is definitely alive right now. Second down. Tool rolling. Just throwing it away. Smart play. That's the maturation of the sophomore quarterback, Jeff Tool. They wanted a red shirt him last year. Uh, then they went into USC and they, they burned it right then and there. They figured, all right, he's got to be our guy. We got to throw him right in there, and he's got to learn very, very quickly. Well, Threw three picks last week, though, but the, the week before, didn't throw any. But as the coaching staff said, J.W., he just flushed it. And that, that's a, a sign of a, a quarterback who's learning and uh, getting some confidence. And I like I like how he's developed. I mean, a year ago, you probably try to fit that in, and it's the interception. Third down. He might run. Flags everywhere. It's a first down, but probably a hold. Which will set up a third and long for Washington State and negate that third down scramble for a first. And, and the hardest thing right now Holding. is that... 79 offense, 10 yard penalty, replay third down. And the hardest thing right now for the UCLA Bruins is not being able to get pressure on the quarterback. There's and a, There's a nice tackle by David Gonzalez, yeah, that's huh? Pro that's protecting your quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Protecting your quarterback so you don't get those big hits. The Cougars have had some success here in this edifice. They lost two years ago in the Rose Bowl, but prior to that, they had won three straight in Pasadena. Remember, this is a team that had three 10-win seasons at the beginning of the decade, the beginning of the 2000s. Two, all sorts of time. Throws it on third down, long caught! Marquise Wilson inside the 10. Remember that in the first, although there's a flag again, but this might be going up against UCLA. In fact, Tool thinks so. There's a flag back down at the 35-yard line. What I was saying was, remember the long third down reception to Kerstetter. Defense, number 42, half the distance to the goal, first down. Oh, so this is going to be inside the five-yard line now. So, hey, on third down, they're not settling for just the first. They've gone deep a couple times, and, and, 49 yards this time. And I started the, the broadcast off for the second half, and I just made it real clear is that if you don't have a pass rush, it, it opens exposure to your secondary, and the secondary has not been able to make a play when the ball's in the air. Hey, Bruin fans, you're one play away from being behind in the third quarter to Washington State. At home. After beating Texas in the upset of the week in the nation, shocking everybody. First down. And what you never want to do is give a team on the road confidence that they can come uh, in your house. Absolutely. And that's what they've done. Tool, Montgomery, wrapped up by the Bruins there, out of the two and a half yard line. There's Akeem. Akeem Ayers, the lot impact player of the week. Monterey had five solo tackles, two for losses, a sack, a force fumble, and a pick against Texas. You know, you line him up down the end, linebacker. He's going to cause havoc wherever he is. LeGuan Mitz is in, so is Montgomery. Up the middle, give, touchdown, Washington State. James Montgomery and Grasso on for the extra point to give the Cougars the lead. And this is just a simple play. Guys just playing harder up front offensive line just holding their blocks and running back finding the whole touchdown by washington state and you know the, the thing about it is washington state has not been able to run the football at all this year i mean they've been flat out horrible a bad execution blocking the pad levels <laughs> as the coaches have been saying just you know when you average 89 a game you're not getting it done at all but montgomery scores tool do it and it's 21-20, Washington State.
Nine plays, 68 yards, took just over four minutes. It's two big third down conversions, long passes that have meant the difference for Washington State so far. One late in the first half to Karstetter, and that long third down to Marquise Wilson setting up that score. And not only that, it just looked like a punt in the sense that the ball is just hanging in the air, and one defensive back from UCLA just has to come over and make a play, and they're out of that possession. Smith for the Bruins. 27 yard line. Hey, Rebecca, that sideline's got to be jumping down there for Washington State. Yeah, guys, the sideline is definitely jumping, but I have to say the mood is more determination over celebration. And, you know, yesterday I caught up with Washington State center Zach Williams, who's a local Pasadena High School product. And he said that the goal this week was just to simply be more physical, that the team just wanted to believe in themselves, go out and fight. They're certainly doing that right now in this ball game. Yeah, Zach Williams, the senior center on that offensive line. And that you can see that they're being more physical. And I said they practiced four days in pads, yep. tackling, live tackling, and it usually doesn't work that way. But the offense has to come out here and do something. Yeah. Franklin from Brijo out to the 32-yard line. So we'll see what kind of uh, offense the Bruins run out there now. You know, it's easy to run and run it into the ground and uh, do your ground control like they did against Texas when you're ahead. Yes. Uh, it's ball game now, so you're. It's a. And this is some great look experience. At it differently. This is some great experience for Brijo to be able to come out here. Now he has. He's behind, and now he has to orchestrate a drive to keep the Bruins moving. Franklin. Up the middle he goes, close to a first down, hanging on to the football. Did fumble it once last year. That was a problem he needed to rectify coming into the season. Remember, he fumbled it eight times last year. Only had a couple of the drops this year so far. Well, you know, what Jonathan is really concentrated on is being a leader. And not being a leader vocally, but working on his strength and working on some of his weaknesses. And he feels that if he can get himself, I have sat down with him time and time again, if he can just get himself right and lead by example, the team will follow. Third down and short. Rijo with Franklin behind him. And they will give it up the middle. Fumble. Boy, we talk about it, and he fumbled. Knocked out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Turnover, UCLA. You know, they were minus two coming in, and it turned it over 12 times this year. They've turned it over twice this season, and Myron Beck made the play. And the only thing that can happen is that, you know what, you got to hold on to the football because this is, is the making of an upset when you're turning the football over, especially giving the opponent the ball inside your 20. Any coach will tell you that's the only way you're going to lose if you're better than the other team is turning it over, giving them opportunities, giving them life. Chance Staden is in the backfield too. Down he goes. UCLA's got him at the 29-yard line. Might have to be something. At some point, something has to fire up this defensive line so that the quarterback can't just sit in the pocket and not, you know, be allowed to be harassed. And that was a great play by David Carter, getting off the ball, getting off a block, and wanting to get to the quarterback. Second sack of the afternoon for Carter. He's got both of the Bruins sacks today. Chance Staden once again is behind two on second down. Staden up the middle. Run down at the 22-yard line. They need to get to the 10, the Bruin 10, for a first down. So it'll be a big third down coming up, leading the football game and trying to take advantage of the UCLA tournament. And this is where the Bruins is ha have had problems today. Basically, third down and long, where they have not applied the pressure to the quarterback and he's been able to sit in the pocket and make the correct throw to the opening seat. Well, it's on the Bruin secondary here. Third down and 12. The Staden behind it. Two steps up. Throws towards the end zone. That's a flag. Yeah. A little bit too early. And that's Aaron Hester, the sophomore. Just got to the body. Put his hands on it. A little bit early. 
And this is starting to happen week in and week out with Aaron Hester. I mean, they're looking to see if it was a tip ball at the line of scrimmage. But Aaron Hester just has to be more disciplined. Are at they the picking the position. flag up? The only thing that happens is. All right, James, check, see. Yes. I think um, Akeem Ayers got his hands up. Yeah, he did. So it, it's But still, Aaron Hester has to be a better football player than this. I mean, where he has the guy covered, he has to be able to play. Because Aaron Hester can't possibly see that the ball was tipped at the line. Of exactly. Scrimmage. So they uh, should pick it up. And uh, it'll set up a a fourth down, perhaps. Yeah, I can't. Here it is. Pass I interference, defense, 15 yard penalty. I oh. can't. First down. Well, I'll tell you what. I came there as I thought tipped it at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, but but uh, looking at uh, on the uh, the slow motion replay, the super slow motion replay, I I don't know. No, it's just an ugly throw. Yeah, duck. <laughs> he threw an Oregon duck I, out it's there. Just, it's just <laughs> the ball came off his hand so wobbly that you would think that it was thrown. Yeah. You see, no. see, it's already, it's yeah, already it's turning over. <laughs> wow. If he'd thrown a spiral, he would have. <laughs> wow. It just kind of turned over just at the time that Akeem Ayers was there. Like so what, a, yeah, what appeared to everyone to be a tip is just, it, it, well, as we originally called it, pass interference. It's a first down and goal inside the 10. Are they going to uh, check it? They're seeing what we see. In all, in all well, honesty, know, the ball was just thrown. It was a badly yeah, thrown and I, ball. And I think that's what will be. And, <laughs> and talking to the replay officials before, they said, hey, it's so much easier now because everything's in high definition. Everything's blown up. We can see it pretty easily. Look, that's just a bad release. I don't think he ever got it. I mean, if you're a Bruin, you're hoping that that's going to be the case. But again. Well, you look like he tipped it right there. Think so? Yes. All look, right. No. You can't tell. No, it's oh, way, no, it's, it's way, way over. over his hand. Yeah, this will it's be an easy way. one. Yeah, this will easy. be an easy, easy one to call. call. Easy call. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately for the Bruins, uh, the but, pass but, interference should stand. And, but my deal in the secondary, you can't see if a guy tipped the ball. After further there. review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. And the, and the difference between confirm and stand. Yeah, confirmed means it's obvious. Yes. Yes, uh, that, that's the terminology that you use. And yes. it stands means it was uh, too close to call, but so they're going to go with, yes. yeah, they're going to use the one on the uh, on the field. So yes. that, that is 100% uh, affirmation that the uh, right call was made. First and goal for Washington State. I think what you have here is that Washington State has found a way to win this football game, and they're going to stick to it. On first down, up the middle, Montgomery out of bounds. It was a good pursuit by the Bruins on the perimeter. Sheldon Price, the 6'2 sophomore, he's put a little more beef on that body this year. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit. He's still got some more to go. He's at one, one, he came in about 165, he's like 172 at this point. John. Tiny bit. Yeah. You know his dad pretty well. Actually, me and his dad play together. Um, one of my dearest friends, actually. Um, Dennis Price. We had a lot of fun in the secondary. Game. On second down and goal with Montgomery behind Tool. Tool again fires and completes. Flag down. Penalties are killing the Bruins. Right or wrong, the flags are hitting the turf, and UCLA is getting hammered by them. And it's the aforementioned Price trying to cover Karstetter. Eighth UCLA penalty. And he has the guy covered. No need for Pass it. interference. Defense number 22. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. It's a tough call there. So a first down. New set of downs at the one-yard line for the Cougars. Eight penalties for 73 yards. And that's the third first down by penalty for Washington State. Montgomery will be the running back out of an I formation and under center. So 
so we haven't seen this formation. So uh, for the tight, tight formation for the Cougars at the goal line. See if Montgomery gets it. He will go it right, slashing it in. Touchdown, Washington State. Taking advantage of Bruin blunders. And remember, this is coming off of the fumble by Franklin. If you talk about an upset, two things that creates upset. Being able to tackle the football. Right here, somebody makes the tackle and wrap up. They get another opportunity. Penalties that got them down there. Personal fouls and fumbles and turnovers is key to failure in football. We're going to go eight up with Grassi. 7-16 to play in the third. This is all around. So a uh, false start. Offense. Stunned crowd at the Rose Bowl. Five yard penalty. And you know, I, I, you got to just go back. This is what everybody was talking about. You go down, you beat Texas. You figure it's a gimme putt of about a foot and a half. And uh, here it is, 27, soon to be 28, 20 in the third quarter. You have to come out with the same intensity on both sides of the ball as you did last week. And the defense, I think the offense came out and played a quality first half. They did enough to, to build the confidence. Well, the Bruins before showed that they can handle adversity. Can they do it now? Down in the third quarter. Well, Washington State is five for nine on third downs. They started out 0 for three after the first quarter in that department. And so you can do the math. They've been brilliant since uh, facing adversity. Montgomery gets the score after that young man, Jonathan Franklin, unfortunately for UCLA, lost the football, so they turned turnovers into points. And it's uh, now 28-20, Washington State over the Bruins. And see, the difference now is that if, if your defense is not playing well and you turn the ball over, you know, now you have to come out on offense and execute the plays. You have to be able to move and get first downs and give your defense some rest. Defensive coordinator Chris Ball for Washington State. They have a goal every week. Three turnovers and make 90% of their tackles. They're two-thirds of the way towards that turnover goal. It's time now for our Jaguar key play. And James is what we saw just a couple of moments ago. And unfortunately, I was referring to it right before he let it go that Franklin has had a pass for fumbling. Yes, he's had a pass, but I think he's worked real hard on trying to get rid of that pass. And what I like here is that Wayne Moses puts, you know, Franklin back in yep. the game. You have to build some confidence. And Brijo has to figure out how to throw this ball downfield and loosen up. Yeah, here's Richard, Richard, here's Richard Brijo's chance, uh, his opportunity. Behind the third quarter of the football game, he throws out when he completes. And the receivers have to help Brijo on this. Uh, Randall Carroll, he runs a curl route. He's not open but he doesn't continue to move around to, to, to give some open space, and the quarterback is scrambling. As a young receiver, and he will gain this over the years, is that he has to start moving to the open window to give his quarterback a shot. Second down and 10. Franklin in the backfield. Brijo's first college start. Franklin doesn't have much room. Boy, they are swarming to the football right now. There's a different defense that we're seeing. Nowhere to run and, for UCLA right now. And defense is built off of, comp off of competition and being able to dominate. And what happens is that you have nine or ten guys in the box because you have not been able to complete a ball downfield. And everybody can see that across the across the country. Yeah, they're daring Brijo to throw it now. You know, he started five of six for 49 yards since then. He's 4 of 13 for 47 yards and facing a third at about 12 with Coleman behind him. Richard, out of bounds. Incomplete, three and out for the blue and gold. And now this is where you see the, the youth of the quarterback comes in where you have an Embry who runs a, a, C, a, a, a fade route. A guy rolls up. And Embry is, is wide open, and Brijo throws it out of bounds. You have to at least put it in play to give your receivers a chance 
to make a play. Outs on the defense. Yeah, you're already down eight. So this is going to be a huge series. Lock. The blue oh. middle comes and he just gets it away. How close was that to getting right back at him? Nolan Washington calls for the fair catch. So Locke, a 49-yard kick after it is nearly blocked. How close is it? Right there, fingertips. This team has lost 18 of 19 conference games. Their lone win in that stretch was the 2008 Apple Cup against rival Washington. Trying to shock UCLA. Tool throwing wide open is Karstetter. Just working it right now. Jared Karstetter, 6'4", junior. Had six touchdowns last year. Had a couple last week. Had that big catch towards the end of the first half. And they found a matchup with, against Hester and Karstetter. And I think Costetter is, is getting the best of the secondary at this point. Well, you see the total yards racking up in favor of the Cougars as Montgomery goes for two or three. You know, real quick, the UCLA's not on offense, but you were telling me during the break, you know, it's a different kind of a pistol that they're they're running this week as well, opposed to last week I don't, against Texas. I don't think it's a complete package that they're running on offense. I think what happens is that Rio, not saying that they had to dumb the offense down, but you don't see as much motion and, and distraction for the defense than you saw last week against Texas and against Houston. Right, we'll check that again when UCLA gets back on offense. Right now they face a second down and seven on defense. Tool gaining confidence by the moment. Kind of slips down and uh, falls down after a yard. Third down, but they've been very proficient. Actually, he probably lost a yard there. And remember, they showed a propensity to go long on these third downs, not to settle to move the chains. So the Bruins have to beware. Marquise Wilson is their guy, too. And he's a split nearest to us, shadowed by Sheldon Price. Here's where the Bruins have to get a pass rush. Front four coming at him. And they do, and he has to throw it prematurely. That's what a pass rush does. And, and that's what a pass rush does for the secondary. When you have pass rush, I mean, I mean, it doesn't matter who's playing in the secondary, but when they have too much time, it's difficult. But when you're able to put pressure on the quarterback, he has to get rid of that football. And David Carter has done a wonderful job. He has two sacks thus far, and he was able to apply pressure on the quarterback and get it out of his hand. Taylor Embry is waiting for UCLA. This is sky high into the bright sky, and it's muffed! Flag is down. Washington State. Now here's Embry again, waving for the fair catch. Yeah, they get to him a little quick. There was a little, Kick little contact. Number 25, 15-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, Bruins fell on it anyway, but... Uh, just a just a, a nick on uh, Embry, and then the muffed punt. But the Bruins will have it. And Embry has to get his confidence back as far as a receiver. They have him back there. They're not looking for him to get any yak after the after the catch. So he has to get his confidence back as just catching the football. So with that penalty now, the. It'll come out to the 34-yard line. Rehos numbers. Nothing. Goose egg. Second half. Has an opportunity to rectify that right here with Franklin behind him. You see eight guys in the box. Yeah, daring him to throw. As would be expected. Travis Long wraps him up. And that's when it gets very difficult to run. When you've got eight guys, nine guys in the box, and they're kind of daring you to throw the football, you have to be able to complete some passes to loosen up this defense a little bit because they're up on the scoreboard and they gain confidence and you see a lot of press press coverage now where they're in the face. Yeah, much different formation. Bar and Franklin were both behind. 
the quarterback, and they go to the near side, and it's Franklin for a first down in UCLA. And you see this, now they're trying to mix it up a little different. Guys moving in directions. Um, Presley coming across the formation, quarterback going one way, running back going one way. Now that's the type of pistol offense that confused Texas. They have to get back to that so that you have a lot of moving parts in this pistol. Franklin, the workhorse behind. We've seen plenty of Coleman, however. Brijo, little play action across the middle, caught. Finally, we get a chance to see the tight end in the mix, Corey Harkey. About eight balls all the last year, had just two coming in this year. Big target, 6'5", 260, and a junior. And I think 260 might be going to be light on Corey. And, that, and that's a great confidence for him, because a confidence builder for Harkin, because he's dropped a couple passes in the previous games, and they, they run this waggle-type bootleg that gives him an opportunity to catch the ball for a first down. 15 yards, good start to the drive for the Bruins. Helped by that penalty on the punch. Quick throw by Brijo, oh, wide open. Good call, good throw. Jerry Johnson, second catch, out of bounds. Let's move the chains again. Bruins on the move with three minutes to play here in the third quarter, down by eight. And this is nice to see because um, Johnson has worked real hard um, this offseason. You know, Rosario goes down, now he gets an opportunity to come in the game and make some catches and, and make a mark for himself. First down with Franklin again behind. Wide outs are split. Rio, opportunity to change at the line. A yard, maybe. A couple. Once again, the defensive line. A little deeper this year up front. Staying healthy for Washington State. That's a, that's a plus for them but uh, still doing a lot of experimenting for Coach Wolf, who has won just four games in his tenure. Rick has won 13, lost 16 in his third year. Overall, though, Rick Neuheisel looking for his 80th win as a college coach. Paul Wolf was at Eastern Washington for eight years before he came to the Palouse. On the delay, Franklin again. Got new much I need to block, gets one, 10, down to the seven yard line. Good block and two and hard running for Jonathan Franklin. And this is what you gotta do, you gotta stick with it. I mean, Jonathan Franklin gives up the ball, but you know what, Jonathan Franklin comes back, he gets the handoff here, and he can see, he gets outside and he has the speed to get outside and make a play for the Bruins. He has to come back and make plays. Can't worry about what happened in the fumble, Come back and make another play for your team. And Marv right down the field trying to throw a block into Springer for a couple of extra yards. 147 for Franklin. Coleman and Barr both in. There's the deception. Kept by Brehar, and he's down to the one yard line. Chima Wachiku, been in that defensive backfield for a while now. Familiar name for the Cougars. Bruins right on the doorstep now and that one yard line. And as you can see, now you're starting to see different motion, different body parts moving. Brijo, a little slow footage right there, but um, they hit on the play, but that's the right read because it was open. Yeah, truly, that's that, that's another difference. Prince is going to run more yes. than Brijo will. And we've seen that. But the pistol offense is set up for the quarterback to run. Up the middle, Coleman stands up. Right at the goal line. Boy, stood up right there. We got a nine-man front, almost a, <laughs> I want to say a ten-man front here. I mean, there's nowhere to go. It's a brick wall. Ledgerwood was there, a couple of others. You have one guy in coverage, and everybody else is just standing there waiting for the Third down and goal. Wait for a signal. Touchdown, UCLA, Derek Coleman. Stick it to your bread and butter, giving it to Derek Coleman right up the middle. Looks like they'll go for two here. Oh, without question. You're down 
if there is a, a pamphlet when you do go, this has got a big star and underline. You're down two in the third quarter late. Two point conversion time. They empty the backfield. It's going to be up to Brio. On the fade. And he beat Daniel Simmons. And the student section has a reason to celebrate. And that's the, the Embry that I've been used to, a guy that can actually go up and make the plays. Embry is just a simple fade route. Who's going to be the better player on this particular play? And Embry ends up coming down with the football. That's the Embry that the UCLA Bruins want to see and, week in and week out. And if you're throwing that pattern, that's a good throw by Richard Reed. Yes, that is. Yeah, perfect. you got to lay it in there. More half step. And Embry is out of bounds. So a, a finely engineered drive that time by UCLA. Mixing it up when they needed to. And uh, we're tied at 28. Half a minute to go in the third. we got a ball game on yeah, Don't we, though? Lots of people, including us, probably didn't expect it, to, but we've got it. Again, it debuts every Monday on Prime Ticket at 10.30. It's the Rick Neuheisel Football Weekly Show. James and I will be convening on campus tomorrow afternoon to shoot this thing. That's right. And then you'll see it on Monday. Hopefully, <laughs> Hopefully we have something good to talk about. Every Monday at 10.30. Now the crescendo of the crowd. Get back into it. Now it's time for the defense to step up and make a play. Special teams can make a play here, but defense has to come out and make a play if they get an opportunity. The kickoff by Locke, up the middle. Decent field position for Carl Winston. He'll take it across the 30 every single time. You got to love that, though. I mean, I think when you go on the road as a visiting team, and I, I, I've said this about the UCLA Bruins, but I've said about Washington State, is that you got to try to win in two phases of the game. May it be offense, special teams, defense, special teams, or offense and defense. And what has happened here is that it's been a balance. I think it's been a push. That they've been, been able to get great field position on the kickoffs, and move the football. Well, last week, UCLA went in and had their first road win over a ranked team since September of 2001. And they're trying to avoid a big upset right here. It's a flag down. Yep. Owama Bay. Odigizuwa was in on the stop, and there is a flag. The referees are kind of quick. I, I, I thought this was football, Billy Matt. You don't like it, do you? I mean, I have to see the play. Last time I saw this many flags, we were doing an arena game. Those things were loaded with that. <laughs> you hit a guy too hard, you might get a flag today, Billy. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 94, 15 yard penalty. Where? There's no, there's no face mask on the replay. Oh, Diggy Zua, there he is. All right, let's see if we can uh, find it. He has his shoulder pads. He has his shoulder pads. He has both shoulder pads. I don't see a face mask at all, Billy Mack. There's no face mask. One, one, one hand and the other one's on his up, upper shoulder. His, no face mask, Billy Mack. I love the stripes, but that was not a call that should have been made. And with it, the ball moves up to the 44-yard line and a first down. Tool, little inside. Marquise Wilson has a couple of hundred-plus games already and is a true freshman. The last guy to do that for Washington State was a, a gentleman by the name of Philip Bobo back in... 1990. Marquise has a huge career ahead at Washington State. They're signaling fourth quarter on the bench for Washington State. Right now, the Bruins and the Cougs are tied at 28. Fourth quarter after this.
Uh, Washington State has been hot in the second half. It's hot on the field. I'm sure Rebecca could attest to that. She's been down there patrolling the sidelines for us. It's gotten into the 90s and still humid. Tool to start the quarter. Throws caught wide open. Inside the 30, the 20, to the 10. Wilson may score. He's close. And he's out of bounds at about the one-yard line. The freshman Marquise Wilson down to the one-yard line. 50 yards and another huge play for Washington State. And when you have confidence on the road, anything can happen. I mean, and this basically having time and just making a great play by the freshman. Phenomenal. Vincent Montgomery. It's a sneak by Tool. He's not going anywhere. Probably get back to the line of scrimmage, though, so it'll be second down. That's uh, Wilson's fifth catch of the year of 40 plus yards. That one goes for 50. And you come, you know, on the road, and you come back and answer a touchdown with a big play like that, get a personal foul. It's a whole different ball. Actually, game. you know what? He's made two catches of 40 plus, so he's got six already of 40 plus. Tool fake. He's going to go one on one to the cone. Touchdown, Cougars. And Washington State has come right back. And the big play just killing Rick Neuheisel's team here this afternoon. I think he should be replayed. I think his leg is down before he even think about getting to the end zone. Well, that's why they're immediately trying to uh, trying to kick this extra point. It should be blown. Right there. He's not, he's not he's, in. He's not in. And they're going to try to kick it. And as soon as they do, it's on the board. Wow, count it. Or no, or did they blow it before? Well, the kick was missed anyway, but they missed the kick. However, they got it away. And it wasn't Grasso that time either, it was Fernie. So in, in all the confusion to see whether or not it was going to be replayed, <laughs> the kick was no good which could loom huge. Well, there it is. I mean, it's... It's clearly his knee is down at the one. Yeah, you're, you're a half yard short. Well, that, should not, that should not matter. They already kicked it. So. Yeah, they kicked it. So they missed the field, though. With the extra point. The extra point. As you can see, he's about a half yard short when the knee goes down. And the problem that I have with that, though, the, the, the stripes are standing right there. I mean, you could see the stripes standing right there. They could see that, that ball. It's not like the NFL. Difference is once your knee is down or any body part is down, you keep on, keep on moving. Now, James, unless and I'm just going to call it right out here to you and, and ask you and defer to you. Unless I have the rule wrong, I'm assuming once you kick the point. Oh, the buzzer went off, though. All right, so the buzzer did go off. So it went off in the referee's pocket before the kick. So it is under review. Because I'm assuming that maybe the buzzer went off after the kick. Because you know, we're watching the same yeah, I'm play. Hearing, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing that, that it's obviously under review. Yes. So the buzzer had to go off before the kick. So actually this works in the favor of, of Washington State. I don't know. It'll work in favor of the Bruins because they'll take the touchdown off the board. They, but, they, but what I'm saying is that now what you have, they go out and they're on the one-yard line. And it gives UCLA an opportunity to stop Washington State. Right, exactly. It'll, it's good to tell totally in, in the benefit of UCLA. The previous play was under review. It will be third down and goal at the two-foot line. The runner was down. As we said, he's down. The buzzer went off before the kick. Take the points off the board. It's not a touchdown. It's still 28-28. Points are still up. There they go. They finally took it off the board here at the Rose Bowl. And it is third down and goal at the two-foot line. UCLA needs to 
find something to make a play down here on the goal line. It's not like it hasn't happened before. Yeah, the big boys up front got to really step up here. So the review reverses the call. Now Washington State bolting on to the field. UCLA got to get set quickly. They're going to go out a shotgun. Out of shotgun from the foot line. Tool's going to roll. Great pressure. And he's going to throw it out of bounds. Great pressure by the Bruins. So they obviously dialed up the right defensive scheme. I'm surprised they went from shotgun and not under center again. The Bruins had 3-4 wow. coming at them. Fourth, fourth and one. They're going for it. They must believe they have something. They're going to go for it. Fourth and one on the road. Remember, Grasso wasn't in there for the extra point, so that might be one of the reasons also Grasso might be hurt. Fernie went in and was kicking the extra point. So there could be a situation where the kicker is unavailable and it makes it even that much more of an easy decision for Coach Wolf. That said... We've got a fourth down and goal from the foot line, and the game is tied. We'll see you in a minute. Here we go. Fourth down and a foot. Now under center is Tool. Tool will give it. Working right side. Short. Going to coming out on both sides. That's Raheem Moore coming in to make the play. And Raheem Moore does a wonderful job getting his pad level lower, to, lower than the running back and stopping the play before the ball crossed the goal line. I think I have to say that's the most physical play that I've seen Raheem make in his career. Yeah, and the Bruins, uh, as an entire football team, weren't playing physical the last couple of games. Now they got to punch it out of here. So you've got Coleman, the physical back, behind. But Rijo will throw, get some some room out to the five-yard line to Randy Carroll. So the, it'll be about a four-and-a-half-yard game for UCLA and second down. So just a, just a, a crazy couple of minutes. Uh, a touchdown that was taken back after Tool's knee. Uh, had him down at the half yard line and after we thought that the replay wasn't even going to be good because the extra point had already been kicked by a guy who wasn't the regular kicker so you know we'll, we'll just try and to get they, everything and they couldn't go for out. the field goal because maybe he wasn't available right, right. Yeah. and then the Bruins the big hole Coleman out to the nine yard line and in all of that we're in the fourth quarter and the game is tied at 28 and now UCLA just trying to Get some room to maneuver and operate. It'd be a huge first down here if they could get it on third down in about a yard. And what you're trying to do on offense here is just get a first down and keep the chains moving. Yeah, if I'm Washington State, I'm in a second guess mode. I go back to going out of shotgun on third down. If you're going to be in four down territory, just go under center from the foot yard line twice. Up the middle, first down. And you know what? Derek Coleman is just doing what he does. He's just a pounder. And what happens, that offensive line has done a wonderful job opening it up. And I say what you do is go back to the basics, UCLA Bruins. Go back to the basics and run the football. And when they're able to do that, Derek Coleman, he doesn't have the breakaway speed, but he pounds enough that he's able to hit those holes. And now you see first and 10 going in. 72 yards. Coleman now with 161 on 13 carries and two scores. Bruins in business in the red zone. Griho, delay, Franklin, 10 yard line as he scoots up there on that first down run. So Coleman has 161. Let's add that to Franklin. And of course, we've also seen a couple of uh, 
carries from Malcolm Jones, but Franklin's got 155, so Coleman and Franklin are over 300 yards combined on the ground. And you got to give all the credit to Mike Harris, Eddie Williams, Ryan Taylor. Franklin on second down and a couple. They're behind three help. He's going to get it again. Up the middle he goes. Franklin first down. Four-yard line for UCLA. Chima Washington tripped him up to Washington State. And let me finish. Ryan Taylor, Darius, and Schiller is getting the job done across the board. That's Darius Savage, the left guard. Sean Schiller, Ryan Taylor is part of that front five, the filthy five, the filthy five, the rip crop, you know, he says sorry to the parents. Barr and Franklin both behind Brijo. Franklin trying to weave his way in. Any kind of daylight, they're pushing the pile and down to about the one. That was a mess. They got 11 guys in the box in 11. Got to spread it out. If you're going to allow Jonathan Franklin to see some holes, you got to stretch the defense and spread the offense to allow some gaps to be there. Because if everybody is in the box, 11 guys in the box, Franklin is not that type of running back. Not a great spot for the Bruins. It'll be outside the one. So out of shotgun. Rio. Franklin's behind it. Randall Carroll in motion. Richard's going to score. Touchdown, UCLA. And what you see, the difference is you see a lot of movement. This is what I was talking about. The pistol offense, when you have a lot of movement, now guys have to read who has the ball, especially if the ball is pounding up through the middle. Richard Brijo walks in because of the movement from the pistol allowed him to walk in with that ball. And Richard Brijo is gassed as he is met by Kevin Prince at the sideline. There he is. He deserves this. A little bit of a rest. Four back tacks on the extra point. A 14-point switch. Touchdown gets taken off the board, and the Bruins come back and take the lead. Well, alongside James Washington, down on the field, Rebecca Harlow and our great crew here at the Rose Bowl. Hope you're enjoying this one. Richard Brijo, as mentioned, it has been hot. It has been humid. He has been thrown into the cooker. His first collegiate start. Uh, Rick Neuheisel, Norm Chow, both very coy on who was going to start. They held out hope, I think, to the very last minute that Kevin Prince might go. And that uh, Brijo has acquitted himself for the most part. Isaiah Barton out to the 24-yard line where he is swarmed. All right, Rebecca, how hot is it down on the field right now? Well, guys, I can tell you I'm feeling every bit of the hot, wet 92 degrees that we have on the field. But interestingly enough, the Bruins don't seem to be affected at all. Of course, we saw the run from Derek Coleman. He's doing just fine out there on the field. The guys aren't using the big fog machine. They're very focused on this game. And according to Taylor Embry, Prince and Brijo had the guys working so hard this summer that by the time camp rolled around, they were all in great shape. Yeah, that's a testament to the coaching staff, the strength coach, getting them all set to go. This is whole last week and extraordinarily hot in Southern California. Uh, down at the 32-yard line, Marquise Wilson. He's made a couple of huge plays. And uh, two young teams we're seeing here growing up this afternoon. And, and not only growing up, but what happens is like adolescence, having a teenager. You don't know what you're going to get. Sometimes you see a teenager and he does something brilliant and you say, yes, he has it. And then he goes around the next time and then he does something that you just kind of blows your mind and say, what is wrong with you? And that's what you're seeing out here. Two young teams trying to grow up and find their identity. I think what you were talking about is lack of consistency. All great things have that one thing in common. Consistency. Throw it up for Wilson. Trying to make an acrobatic grab. Sheldon Price. Just blanket coverage. And it's incomplete. Third down and about two for Washington State. And this is where the defense has to step up and find a way to make a play. And on the Washington State side, they have to go to their playmakers. And obviously, it's one of the receivers. The defense. 
including the Pac-10 Player of the Week defensively, Sean Westgate. Two weeks ago, the Player of the Week, Patrick Laramore. The Rock Impact Player of the Week, Akeem Ayers. Those three backers digging in. Here's the give, and a first down out across the 35. James Montgomery. And that's a great play by Washington State because you know that they've been completing passes. They spread the offense, they, and they do a nice thing. It's kind of like a hurry up, audible, and they audible to a run depending on what defense they see the UCLA Bruins set up in. Bruins haven't been in this position often in the last couple of years. Locked. Maybe a little to the outside of Wilson, but still something you got to grab in at this point in the game. And I think Marquise knows it. And not only that, I mean, two things there. The quarterback has to actually hit an open receiver. Yeah. But the secondary has to be covering the guy. When you look at guys and you see the type of routes that they're running, we got to get Abbott on that flat route or get somebody in that area. That would be Andrew Abbott who, by the way, just earned a scholarship. Yes, Congratulations amazing. to him. Amazing. He's worked hard for him. Yep. He's sophomore cornerback for UCLA. Down goes Jeff Toole. Third Bruins sack, and it's the third one by that guy right there, the senior David Carter. And I kind of gave David Carter the eye during practice. You know, he has worked extremely hard all offseason to try to make some things happen. In Texas, he's kind of playing a little slow, and Todd Howard, the defensive line coach, put him in roll call and said, you know what, we need some guys to step up and make plays. And David Carter has done a wonderful job playing today. Remember, BP was, be uh, he was behind BP Brian Price last year, played maybe 30% of the Bruins snaps on defense. Third down and long, they got to get out to the 46. Tool steps up, throws down a man caught, another, another third down conversion. And it's Jeffrey Solomon in Bruin territory to the 44. The Bruins can't stop him on third down. They and this move is the change. And this has been a problem for the Bruins all day is you cannot allow guys to run deep in the secondary. The linebackers have to get some depth and make the ball go up, but it's a variety of reasons this is taking place. Seven third down conversion. Now Montgomery running free in the secondary down to the 27 yard line. The Cougar fans must be beside themselves. Uh, this is a, the kind of a team that they've been hoping that uh, they would see against a Pac-10 opponent over the last couple of years, and they just, just hasn't uh, shown itself. And there's part of the faithful that have come down from Pullman. LeGuan Mitz is your running back. Tool under pressure, knocked down, incomplete. That one was tipped at the line of scrimmage, good pressure. And not only that, but what you have seen on those third down plays is that when you start passing the ball, we have talked about how getting pressure on the quarterback changes everything. And you see here, Nate Chandler gets the pressure, and it changes a lot of things. They're trying to run a, a middle screen to make some things happen. What was behind the move inside for Chandler? Well, the move inside was to allow him, because he's a big body, and they needed some guys that could put some pressure up in the middle. Mitz is uh, the tailback tool. That's like his third option into the end zone. It's caught, but out. Well, I'll tell you what. Tool went through his entire progression, moved right all the way through the field to the left, and then there was Marquise Wilson, but he was out of bounds. And not only that, I mean, Tool is doing a wonderful job finding receivers, but the guys in the secondary have to be able to make some plays because they have time. Third down again, James. Third down. They've, they've converted seven of them. Someone has to step up and make a play for UCLA because the ball is going across the middle because that's where it's been opening, so the linebackers have to get some depth and make the ball go up. Marstetter could be your target, and he's on the near side, and there's strips left. Tool pump fake, wants Carstetter. He's knocked down. That should not be a flag. It should not be a foul, and it is not. That was an uncatchable ball. And, and that's Carstetter hadn't gone into his break yet. And, and young guys just pretty much get their legs tangled up in there. So Andrew Fernie is on. It's not Grasso. And uh, this is a, a huge development. Haven't had any kind of information on one of the best kickers in the pack, and that's Nico Grasso. You know, in fact, Washington State's last three wins can be directly attributed to the clutch kicking of Grasso, and he's not in. 
So this 46-yard attempt, this is not a gimme by Fernie. Well, not even close, but for the backup kicker. It's going to get there distance-wise, but it's way left. So the Bruins catch a break there. Take a break. When we come back, Bruins have it up by seven, seven and a half to play. Well, combined, we have over 800 yards of total offense, 497 for the Bruins, 367 for Washington State. It's back and forth. Who saw that coming? <laughs> Here's Jonathan Franklin busting it out to the 46-yard line. We just uh, sent uh, Gary the Flea Jones, our spotter, down to the radio booth of uh, Washington State to see if we can get any information on Grasso. They don't even know, so the home radio is uh, unaware of what's going on with the Washington State kicker. Here's a good run by Franklin on first down. You know, you come on the road as the Washington State Cougars, underdogs. You're in a fight. You're in a dog fight, and now you lose your kicker. That's just a draw of bad luck there. Well, yeah, and Grasso, granted, you're not going to tie the game there, but Grasso, six for nine over 40 yards in his career, hit a 56-yard against Oklahoma State. Gives you some options. Oh, great balance. Staying on his feet is Jonathan Franklin. The numbers are just staggering, eye-popping. The numbers that Franklin and Coleman are putting out there combined uh, for UCLA. It's just been an incredible one-two punch against this Cougar defense this afternoon. And, you know, this Bruin running game, which has been non-existent for a couple of years, all of a sudden has been resurrected the last three years. Let's say five years. I can know for sure that it's been about five years where they've been able, and they was part of the, the bottom part of the NCAA college collegiate football for the past five years, but now they have figured it out. Now it's Coleman in there. Franklin close to 200 yards. Coleman working right, and again, it's it's such a combination. It's this great story, this offensive line, not a ton of not a ton of experience, but uh, you know, senior late, mostly seniors on that front line opening up the holes. And that that's how you look at it. And you say, well, who are these guys? I mean, and when you have one running back for 200 yards and another for 100 and plus yards. It goes to the offensive line. It goes to Sean Sheldon. It goes to Darius Savage. It goes to Ryan Taylor. It goes to Eddie Williams and Mike Harris, the guys that are really getting it done. Plus, you know, all the other guys that's blocking for them. The big story now, the clock. Coleman, first down, following his block, down to the 20 yard line. It's conceivable that both these guys can run for over 200 yards before we're done. I think it has been a long time. Derek Coleman does a wonderful job outrunning and breaking the tackle, trying to find some space. Coleman's got 180. Franklin's got 192 as they juggle the running backs in and out. Nolan Washington came up to make the stop. 521 clocks moving remaining in this game. And UCLA has a first down at the 20. Well, we said they had to get back to the basics, and that's running the football with the filthy five. Maurice Presley's doing a wonderful job blocking when he's when he's zooming and zipping in and out. I mean, it's a collective group of guys. You see this blocking downfield when you see the long runs. Bruins will certainly milk the play clock as much as they can under five minutes remaining. Reho, the quarterback, he's uh, gone start to finish. Up the middle, Jonathan Franklin. Jonathan Franklin now is over 200 yards with that 10-yard gain on his 27th carry of the afternoon. And there's Coleman at 180 in just 15 carries. And, and these two guys probably work harder than anybody on the practice field. Meaning when they when they touch the ball, and I think I said this earlier, when they touch the ball in practice, they grab the ball and run all the way to the end zone, and the next guy takes a wreck. They're giving each other high fives and supporting each other. Up the middle to the five yard line. Boy, hitting the hole quickly that time. 
being helped up is Franklin. And now as you see the pistol offense where you see a little bit more motion. So now the, the linebackers and the defensive ends, they don't know what's coming at them at one time. So now what happens is now you, you stick it in there, now you get a bootleg because the fact that everybody is crashing down on the tailback or they toss it in a reverse, which they've only done once today. Remember after the game, we're going to have a ton of interviews and analysis uh, on our Bruins Live post game show, so stick around for that. Derek Coleman is now the running back. He'll get the call, maybe a yard to the five. Yeah. The Bruins are okay with that. They're just, uh, that just means more time off the clock. They've got the best kicker in the country. And uh, it looks like unless they turn the ball over here, they're going to go two scores up with limited time left. I like to see an option read. And what I'm saying is that when you give Rio an opportunity to roll out, and he has the opportunity to pass or run the football. Third down. Touchdown of the afternoon. And I guess what you have is Chow saying, if it's not broke, let's not fix it, and let's just keep running the ball down their throat. Well, whether it's Washington State, Alabama, Texas, whoever it is, it's impressive what UCLA is doing on the ground. We're running up these two uh, backs via Derek Coleman, Jonathan Franklin. Remember, they did it against Texas. They did it against Houston. So uh, whatever the competition has been over the last three weeks, this ground game has been formidable. Now it's time for our Land Rover game summary. And we go back to when this thing was all tied up. That's where Coleman ties it up. Then this is the this touchdown is, that was taken and, off. And this is the turning point of the game because now you have your defense come in. Raheem makes one of the best plays he's ever made in UCLA history for him. And then UCLA goes back and drives down the field and get it done. Forty-two twenty-eight. UCLA and finally. It's late in the game. Looks like they're going to put away a pesky Washington State team. UCLA, get these numbers. 54 rushes for 441 yards and five touchdowns. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, get the, uh, we'll get the calculator out, get the, last, get the last three games on the ground. Now, the, the numbers, let's be honest. Last week against Texas, the numbers a bit askew because remember that was a defense that had faced spread offenses their first few games, yeah. and uh, the Bruins knew that they were going to be vulnerable in the middle, and that's why Texas's what 85 yards per against was was a, a little bit of a misnomer, misnumber. But uh, still, the Bruins were able to lay it on a, a good Big 12 team, obviously. Well, I, we'll know a little bit more after they play Oklahoma. Well, I look at it as a team finding its identity. And, and when I say that, the UCLA Bruins, for many years, have not had a running game. Absolutely. And you have five guys that, in different reasons of why, we thought that the weak spot of this team was gonna be the offensive line. And I think they took to heart that, you know what, we was not gonna be the weak link on this chain. And they have come out week in and week out, even in the losses have actually stepped up and made plays. Tool in trouble and down he goes. There is a flag down. Could be a face mask. This one might go against the Bruins. This, uh, everything w would appear. Oh, yeah, and Akeem, Akeem knows that uh, he's going to get Personal foul, face mask. Defense number 10, 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, what's happening with this Bruin team is that you know, every other team in the Pac-10 was looking ahead as early as, what, two, three weeks ago saying, all right, that's a win. There's a, there's a win. There's UCLA. And now everybody's rethinking that. 
quite obviously. Uh, and then the UCLA, on the other hand, also rethinking you know, where, where that was a loss. Now, maybe not. Maybe we're going to be a little bit more competitive here. And you, you add a couple guys that was injured. <laughs> and this is a good football team. but Yeah, and, and granted, it's Washington State yes. who has not played well. But, uh, you know, the Bruins showed a little composure, and they came back with their backup quarterback in there. And that's all that matters is rack up a W. I'm sure Rick won't be pleased with a ton of things. Well, I mean, but I think. Win the game and move on. I think Survive happen, in advance. You, you win the football game, but also the, the defense has to go do a gut check. And it was a little let down in my mind in the defense, not being able to put pressure on the quarterback. And you'll have a problem with that out throughout the Pac-10 because you have a lot of teams that can actually throw the football. Carl Winston. Well, and what this gives Washington State, although, you know, they're sick of, of, of uh, moral victories. They want to win a game in the Pac-10. They just can't do it. Their schedule the next couple of weeks is just absolutely brutal. Washington State is just awful with who they have to face. Um, but, you know, it's a step in the right direction after just really feeling down against SC. There's a good cut inside by Jeffrey Solomon as they're trying to make some noise late and they look for a miracle. I mean, sitting here watching the game, you could see some of the positive things that Washington State is able to do. And, and now you see the quick pass, and this is where a lot of people have gone to, where they can pass the ball, but they their defense has to be able to step up and make some plays, and then they can't shoot themselves in the foot. And they have to establish some type of running game if they want to be successful in the Pac-10. Tool's got all day. And he throws it out of bounds. Liberty Mutual upcoming schedule. Let's check it out. We were talking about Washington State's schedule, but what we're going to see here is the Bruins' schedule. And uh, Cal next week. And then the true barometer game, the true barometer game is going to be that Thursday night national TV game up at Oregon. Well, I, I think what you have is Cal on the road. The, the, Cal and Oregon is some tough games, but to go to Oregon with that powerful offense is going to see what this defense yeah. is made of. Where you're at. I mean, uh, that Cal game, that's winnable next week. I think everybody knows that. In fact, the Bruins are thinking every game is winnable, obviously, after you beat a Texas and Houston and follow it up here. and going to have a three-game winning streak. But, you know, little baby steps for... Coach Neuheisel's team. Again, you know, it's funny how we sit here and we talk because after an 0 2 start, and as bad as they looked, and we got to say it, they didn't look good at all and embarrassed at home against Stanford. Mm -hmm. You know, we were just talking about, you and I were talking about salvaging the season somehow. And uh, you're going to be talking to Rick, and uh, you can see it on Monday night at 10 30. You'll sit down, he'll answer your questions, James, and you guys will. Have a little film session too and, and i think when you look at this game he, he he may put a little more emphasis on the defense and and i think the defense and the defensive line they started playing once their backs was against the wall after the goal line stands the defense bowed up and, and has tried to play well but the offense i think has played consistent had a little lull probably in the second quarter but this team overall on the run on the run on the run game has played magnificent. I'll tell you what, first down was great for UCLA today. They averaged over eight yards of play on first down. And that will set you up in some real beneficial situations on offense. Here comes oh, big hit, and down he goes. Sean Westgate. Bam! Credit him with the sack. Timeout, Washington State. And Sean Westgate carries a tremendous story. An undersized linebacker, played special teams last year, and when all the linebackers graduated, he was in, he was in a competitive mode to, to win a job against Glenn Love. And he has turned the notch up so high it's very difficult for Glenn Love to catch up in there, and he's just a playmaker. He's one of those guys, he's not big, he's not fast, but you know what? He is a ball hawk at the linebacker position, and he loves playing the game. Yeah, serious questions about these guys. So, the, the one of the biggest question marks on the football team has turned into 
overnight one of the strongest parts of the football team. Those uh, three linebackers, Ayers, Laramore, Westgate, solid. And a lot of this crowd is a fleet into the night. Remember Bruins Live with Patrick and JJ. I think Rebecca will be a part of that show, and we will have a final comment with James also. So stick around for that. Guide you through this Bruin win. Wasn't pretty. That's for sure. Yes, that's but it was exciting. It's about them. It gave us some excitement up here to talk about. Down goes the quarterback. Loose football. Akeem Ayers has got another one. A sack, a fumble, and a recovery. And the hardest thing, I think, Akeem Ayers goes down. He comes in here, a little banged up as it is, with his sprained spray shoulder. And Tool might have hurt his hand on that sack. Yeah, we didn't really mention that. Um, Sprained his shoulder last week, and uh, they thought he was going to be real limited today. And, and he played most of the downs. And I like when he's at the defensive end spot because not only he has the awareness of the sack, but then he also has the awareness to cause the fumble, and not only cause the fumble, but have the awareness to recover the fumble. That's getting the job. When I told you he was the best player on this field, he's the best player one of the best players in the country when it comes to getting after the ball. Time to take a knee. It'll be interesting to hear what Richard Grijo has to say, how he assesses his performance. Came out hot, hit a low, then uh, finished relatively strong. Uh, and then once again, as the story has been the last couple of weeks, it's all about the Bruin running game. And uh, we'll see how it continues to evolve and hopefully flourish as Jeff Toole, another long day, came up short, 42-38, 42-28 rather. Much, much, much closer than anybody thought it was going to be. With us, there will be some issues to discuss for, U uh, discuss for UCLA, but they're going to win. And they're going to be 3-2 and two, and 1-1 one and one in the Pac-10 and have a three-game winning streak. And that's how you have to kind of look at it, is that it's a W. I mean, I know the expectations may be different, but I'm telling you, if you're a Bruin fan, as low as you were two weeks ago, you got to be thrilled that your team has won three in a row. Got to be thrilled. And, and we, we watch this team develop. I mean, I go out to practice, and I see that they work hard. It's just a matter of when is the light switch going to come on. And the past three weeks, the light switch has come on. I think the defense kind of had a little lull a little bit, may it be the competition, but the defense finally stepped up when they had to on the goal line stands, and then they just kind of rode the thing into the sunset. And again, the Bruins were able to shut down their starting quarterback and rest him an entire week. Uh, and Richard Brijo, in his first collegiate start, winds up leading his team to victory, 42 to 28. So we will address all of this with J.J. and Patrick uh, during our Bruins Live post game. And a great effort by Jeff Toole, and I'm sure Rick Neuheisel is telling him he's got a great future in this league. There you see her. There's Rebecca with Rick. Coach, game of extremes today, but you got to like how your team finished the ball game, starting with that Raheem Moore stop. Well, we're going to look at the film and see that we, you know, what we talked about all week, we have to come ready to play regardless of who's on the other side. But let me just say this about Washington State. That was a big-time effort by that football team. Paul Wolf and his staff did an unbelievable job. Their quarterback was terrific. And, uh, you know, it was a, it was a gut-check football game. I'm not ready to just say we, we didn't play well. I'm, I'm ready to tell you they played really, really well. Gut-check game for sure. But talk about your running game. Those guys definitely stepped up once again. Well, we're getting better. You know, we still got to get all the little things that go with it. Uh, we play, had to play a new quarterback today, and I was really proud of how he stepped up. But uh, we've got to get a world of, uh, better here at fast as we uh, start hitting the meat of the schedule. We go to Cal next week. That'll be a big-time ball game. Yep, and then you go straight up to Oregon. So what's the significance of this first Pac-10 win for you guys? Well, it means we're in the race. Now, what we do about it is, is up to us. We're one and one. Uh, we've got a significant game next week at Cal, a team that's beaten us each of the last two years. If we're uh, who we say we are, then we got to find a way to go win on the road. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Thank you, Rebecca. That's uh, They did not pull a Texas, let's just put it that way. They didn't look ahead. <laughs> they didn't look ahead. No, they did. Well, they might have been a little bit, but as mentioned, give some credit to Washington State. The Bruins will have some work to do getting ready for Cal. It's going to be a great weekend up in the Bay Area. 
for all you UCLA fans. Enjoy it next week. Once again, the final score, 42-28. Stick around, coming right up, the wrap-up of today's game. Patrick, JJ, Rebecca, it's Bruins Live, and it's coming up next. Signal. Airborne, beautiful, and strong. There to ensure the most powerful transmitter is you. Rule the air. Verizon. Unleash your signal. Introducing unlimited talk and text to any number in the U.S., even landlines, for only $69.99 monthly access. Talk at will. Text at will. Connect at will. From Verizon. The Dodgers are painting the town blue. The season is in full swing as the boys in blue take on the rest of the league and defend their NL West crown. And with complete pregame and postgame coverage, Prime Ticket is your ticket to Dodgers baseball. This is my town. D-backs, Dodgers, tonight at 6.30 on Prime Ticket. Brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. AT&T and BlackBerry have teamed up to keep your business moving. Introducing the BlackBerry Torch. AT&T. Rethink possible. It's the most fuel-efficient of all luxury vehicles. But what good is saving energy if you don't put it to good use? The Lexus HS is rated at a combined 35 miles per gallon. But more importantly, features hybrid technology that harnesses and reuses energy. It's much more than fuel efficiency. It's total efficiency. Lease the 2010 HS 250H for $339 a month for 36 months. With $34.99 due at signing. See your Lexus dealer. A victory for UCLA here at home over Washington State. Their first Pac-10 win on the year. They're 3-2 on the season. 42-28. Jonathan Franklin, Derek Coleman, Richard Brejo. The defense coming up. A huge momentum swing in that fourth quarter. We'll talk about it on Patrick O'Neill alongside Jay. Jay Stokes, welcome to Bruins Live. What'd you make of this victory? It's a little tight. Rick Neuheisel was addressing it with Rebecca. Not as pretty as they wanted, but they got the W. I'm sure Rick Neuheisel was disappointed with the play of the Bruins, but I'm sure he was happy at the result and the way the Bruin defense really fought them off and allowed that offense to really seal the deal and go up by two touchdowns. All right, game summary for you. The numbers were huge. I mean, over 500 yards of offense. Uh, the running game was absolutely outstanding. Derek Coleman, uh, you know, three touchdowns for this guy. What'd you make of the way that the Bruins were able to, to get the offense going? Well, they they have to rely on their running game. The running game is strong. Derek Coleman's a guy that is a straight line runner, downfield, and really a power back, a guy that can be elusive and can stay on his feet. And, but uh, what it comes down to, the sheer will of this, this team was to win the game. All right, so with the game tied at 28, looked like Cougars went up. I kind of thought his knee was down. I, you heard me. I was calling for a review, but they went to, to kick the extra point, missed it. And then, you know, we were having a discussion about this. This changed the complete momentum of the game. It, it definitely did change the momentum of the game. His knee was down. I thought that they should have left it alone and, and been able to score a touchdown and kick a field goal to still be up by one. You were on the other side of that. It turned out their defense was strong enough to get it done on two plays and not allow points being scored at all. Their decision to go for it on fourth down rather than kick the field goal, and then you saw UCLA just take it down the field. Great run, 73 yards by Derek Holmes. That was a fantastic run. He hit the middle and it was off to the races. He weaved his way into the secondary, a strong, powerful runner with a tremendous amount of speed, but was not able to make it all the way. And, and, and that's still a tribute to the hard work that he put in to get down there, put them in position to score points. Two running backs with nearly 200 yards. Uh, fantastic display the pistol behind the quarterback, Richard Brijo. Let's bring in uh, Bill McDonald, James Washington, our friends that called all the action for you today. All right, so UCLA wins Billy Mack behind right. the quarterback, making his first start here at the Rose Bowl. What'd you make of his performance considering Ke Kevin Prince is out? We don't know if he'll be back for Cal, assume so. Yeah. But a pr pretty outstanding effort for him. Well, see, that's the thing. When you're, when you're a, a, a backup quarterback, you come in, you, you're not supposed to lose this football game. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm asking you, James, 
James Washington is how did he manage the offense here? This I afternoon? think what was given to him, he managed the offense fabulous because the fact that he did not have any turnovers as far as throwing the ball and putting the offense in a bad position and he could have done better in completing balls but you know what that's all about refs i think he did exactly what is expected he was managing moving the chains and then once he had to complete a first down i think one a big first down when they were on the the one yard line he threw a hitch to carroll to give him some room that ended up in a 90-yard drive. So I think in that a fade, a good throw right in a there. fade, fade route, yeah. and he worked that quite often in practice, and then being able to go back to the pistol and pull it out and walk one in. I know that Brio was sleep well in Westwood tonight. Well, Rick and Norm 